The Z to Z Podcast. Good morning, good evening, or good day, and welcome to the Z to Z Podcast, the home for Xbox achievement hunters and gamer score junkies. I'm your host, Brandon Freeman. Thank you so much for listening. At Z to Z, we love gaming in particular, grabbing achievements and gaining gamer score. We do news, reviews, and interviews. If it's about achievements, we'll unlock it. Hey, you can find show notes for this show as well as previous shows on our website, Z to Z.com. This is episode 82. You can also contact us with questions and comments on Twitter at Z to Z, Z E D T O Z E D, over at our forums, forum.zdz.com, or email us directly, contact at Z to Z.com. So before we get on with the regular show, I'm just going to kind of consider this like a warm-up act. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not part of the main show because we had a very special guest this week. Uh, Randy and Prue both sit down with Smirnov to talk about him taking the number one spot in Gamer Score this last week. And, uh, you know, just all things, you know, we guys, we're still post E3 in the glow of the, the wonderful announcements. And I'm sure there's tons of stuff that are going to come up. But, of course, we cannot forget the fact that he is the new number one. Now, I'm sure that's going to go back and forth. I'm sure even by the time this airs, uh, Stallion's probably going to take it back. And then Smirnov, and then Stallion. Who knows how long the back and forth is going to go with how close they are. But it's exciting that there's some, uh, you know, well, some excitement up at the top. So before we get into that, I have a couple of quick announcements. Um, So for the first announcement is we are... We're launching our Patreon campaign. We've talked about it for like ever and said, oh, yeah, we're totally going to do that. Totally going to do that. Totally. Well, it takes a lot of time to set up. And, and even, um, you know, it, time is so fleeting, especially when, oh, man, all I want to do is play games. Uh, but we have a show. We There's so much we want to do with the show. And we're asking you, our listeners, you've already reached out a ton and say, hey, how can we help? How can we, uh, you know, get the show moving? How can we, uh, you know, be a part of the, the whole process? Well, here's your chance. You guys, you could join up with our Patreon. Um, we're very, very clear on how it's going to be laid out and what the, the thresholds are in order to, A, keep the show running, B, keep all the contests we're currently doing uh, as they stand, and C, get new contests with bigger prizes, more uh, you know, more games that we can give away, things that we can do to give back to the community. Um, that's, that's all we want to do. We want to continue to grow this community by uh, encouraging people to join to join the contests, to have some fun with ach- gaining achievements, gaining gamer score, whatever the contest might be. And so to do that, though, um, you know, it, that makes that makes the contest just that more more exciting. It's fun to to do things for fun and, uh, you know, personal goals, all that kind of good stuff. But man, if you can get a gift card at the end of it just for just for participating, that's even better. And so that's what we want to do. We want to, you know, find a way to continue to support that and continue to grow our community. So Patreon is one a fantastic way to do it, and I'm sure Randy's going to talk a little bit about it too. Um, and and we're and we're all we're, there's some other ways that we're looking to kind of help out with the show as well. So uh, you can go check it check it out. Go to Patreon, look up uh, Z to Z. Uh, you'll find our information there. Uh, I, I guarantee there's no video uh, if you're listening to this close to when it releases. I mean, I got to get a haircut. I got to look nice, but I swear there will be a video going to be posted on there. Um, you can see my pretty face with my Z to Z t-shirt. Um, you know, that's, you know, merchandise. We, there's just so many fun things we can do with this community uh, that you've already been a part of for a year and a half. Uh, uh, if you've listened to the community from the beginning and, and we love it. We love having you guys. We love you all being a part of the community. And so here's an opportunity to, um, you know, to, to make yourself known, you know, huge appreciation from us. And even, even, even if you cannot contribute monetarily, the fact that you're here and and listening to our show, the fact that you are contributing in the contests and earning uh, entries into our monthly contests, that is great as well. Because people are going to say, why are you playing 
uh, you know, that old ass game again. Oh, that's yeah, I got you. You you need it for the gamer tag. That totally makes sense. Or oh, that's a contest. Fantastic, because uh, I know you guys do such an amazing job spreading the spreading the, the 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 word of the show and just letting people know through all your conversations with gamers uh, in you know random groups and stuff. And and the beauty of it is if we can get enough people then you don't have to deal with random groups anymore because we'll have so many people who want to play and unlock achievements um, you know, in those obscure games that we just tend to love so much. So, like I said, if, if, if you're interested and if you can, uh, I mean, seriously, for like even a dollar, three dollars, whatever you can do in a, in, in a month, uh, every little bit helps because that'll just go to offsetting the cost of the show. And that's all we're looking for, just baby steps. So, uh, again, thank you in advance. And, and, of course, we'll have some rewards tied to the different tiers and things that we have for our Patreon campaign. So check it out. Uh, go take a look, and, and I will update you with any of the other cool things that we add to that, like like a video. Uh, you might not think it's that cool. I don't know. You might be interested to see what I look like. That would be one thing. Uh, so aside from that, uh, I figure, you know, since I'm not going to be able to talk on the show really, well, I'm not going to talk on this show. I'm just going to take up a whole bunch of the intro. I'm going to take a whole bunch of the outro. I think the last time I quote-unquote wasn't on the show, I still talked more than Randy and Prue anyway. But I'm going to take some more time because I like talking. Um, I want to talk about what I played this week because the new contest came out. The new random to-do list came out. And we are one week in, and I got eight of them down. I have, uh, I've been just chipping away. I think I think curating my list down to like a hundred some games that that like I really want to con- concentrate on has helped focus me and rejuvenate me and uh, and, and giving me a you know a, a nice drive to chip these things off of course they're all the low hanging fruit right I've got some bigger games I need to tackle but that's beside the point speaking of the random to-do list before I talk about the games we have a a we're, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the contest so August Mar, Mar- blah, blah, blah. August Ma- uh, marks that's the word I'm looking for jeez I can't even talk marks the one year anniversary so after the month of August we will get our normal lists in August and when August is done we will crown a 12 month winner the person who has the most score over the entire year and what that means now is that contest, the fourth annual random to-do list, is all over. It's done. So we are ready to launch the fifth annual random to-do list. But how are we going to do that, really? And so that's the question that we're posing to you, our fans, our listeners, uh, people who are in the contest. We would love if you would go to our forums, forum.zdz.com, and take a look. There's a thread in there about suggestions about what we can do for the random to-do list. Because, you know, this was kind of a trial run. And and I know Terrigan, who, I mean, he put the whole scanning thing together, which is just amazing what he's been doing. But throughout the year, he has been orchestrating some ways to try and break it um, and just see, you know, what, what makes it to a point where it's not fun uh, because that's all we want. We want to make sure that it's fun, that people, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be like casual, but we also don't want it so competitive that it becomes toxic because we've seen some of the wonderful contests that have, have graced our paths. And all of a sudden, once, you know, things get, uh, pe- people get hung up on winning, then, then things get less fun. So, if you guys have any suggestions about what we could do to to improve it, what we could do to uh, you know make it so everybody has a, a chance, uh, and even if you don't have a chance, you're still having fun. I mean, personally, I, as long as I get my list every month, I know I know I can't I can't compete for the entire year, and I can't put up the crazy amounts of score on some of these, but. I'm just I'm just happy to get a list, and and if I get a bunch of achievements, so be it. Um, you know, so we're looking at things like what what's a good minimum achievement size uh, pool, uh, how many games, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we've got some suggestions floating around, and, and there's been a lot of conversation already. But we'd love to hear your input about what might make that uh, that contest a little a little more fun. We're even kicking around the idea of uh, instead of doing a full year to do like three month seasons, right? So, that, so who can score the most in three months? So that if you're a new list. Center, and you jump in, then you don't miss an opportunity to, you know, to do the full year contest, right? Just a suggestion. Uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, if I will mention this though, if we do end up going with that suggestion, that means the next contest wouldn't start until October, 
right? October, November, December would be part of the seasons, which means September is this wild card. And Terrigan had this crazy idea. I don't know if we're going to do it yet, but you guys can chime in and say if you like this idea or not. To have a September random to-do list blowout where you get like 50 achievements or 100, I don't even know. But like you get a crap ton of achievements on your to-do list and we just go nuts for a month. Um, you know, it's not like there's going to be any new games or anything to play, right? That's not September. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see what we end up coming up with. But we'd love to hear your feedback uh, over at our forums, forum.zz.com. Uh, back to my gaming, right? So what what have I been doing this last week? Well, uh, I had mentioned uh, about Diablo. Finally hit level 60, and so we started our Infernal run, finished up the Mad King. That's chipping away real nice. You know, again, I, th- I think I might actually go for that completion. I'm pretty excited about that. Saw some extra chatter in the uh, in the forums in our Diablo uh, s- session. Sounds like some people are interested in getting Diablo Ultimate Evil Edition going, especially with the Necromancer DLC that's just come out. So if you guys are interested in getting a you know a four man team together and stuff, uh, that'd be a great place to to meet up, set some things up, and um, you know get a, find a night that works for everybody. We'll probably keep that up for a while because I think after the 360 version, we're going to go to the 360 version of Ultimate Evil, and then move to the one version of Ultimate Evil. So we got a long haul, at least my crew does. So there'll be plenty of chatter in the Diablo uh, chat room in our dis in my Discord server. That is, uh, if you want to go there, uh, open invitation to everybody, discord.me slash freemhole. And that's, uh, that's my gamer tag, F-R-E-A-M-W-H-O-L-E. So Diablo's going on. We also got Zombie Army Trilogy still out there. Um, that was just uh, on sale uh, real cheap as well. So anyone interested in uh, jumping along with that one, uh, you know, we can we can work on some headshots, killing zombies, horde mode, all sorts of stuff like that. That's a fun game. I really like that. So now it's random to-do list time. Okay, so what did I end up doing? Well, I had an easy one on Dad Beat Dads. Uh, that's a, a fun, uh, you know, baby-throwing brawler that you can actually you can boost pretty easily with two controllers. Uh, so even from a gamer score perspective, that's one to take a look at. Some grindy achievements because you have to do, you know, hundred some games uh you know play game modes over and over and over and over so yeah it's a little grindy from that aspect but uh you can get a lot of quick gamer score by just setting some things up in a local match with two controllers uh, and i started letter quest um i was a huge fan of like text twist and all those types of games uh i, I tend to have a relatively robust vocabulary. I don't know if you've picked up on that from listening to me for the last year and a half. Uh, I tend to use, you know, words that maybe not the average person would use, but maybe stretch those, uh, you know, those syllables out as best I can. So it's kind of fun to play a game where it actually encourages you to make big, long, creepy words. Creepy, why did I use that word? Uh, big, long, crazy words. And uh, and so, you know, I know there's a bit of a grind in that one too, but I got, I think my achievement for that one was uh, spelling seven-letter words. So I got 10 of those relatively quick. That was fun. And then Rogue Legacy. I've talked about this game a ton, guys. But if you're not playing Rogue Legacy, you totally should. It, it, you do have to like roguelikes, though. I mean, that's that's pretty critical, you know, ra- randomly generated uh, castle kind of thing. But there's plenty that carry over from round to round. And so, you know, there's a lot, like, that, that builds upon itself. And so it's not, you know, r- totally roguelike in the sense that you completely start from scratch. But... You are dying a lot in that game. Uh, you definitely are. Well, I ended up getting my first mini boss finally. I had to focus on. It. I usually tend to ignore them, but uh, so I got that for a random to do list achievement. And then a couple other quick hitters: uh, Lego Marvel superheroes, an easy one for throwing Wolverine around. Uh, Lego movie, the video game. Lego movie video game. Yes, that one. Um, that was a, another quick one. Thankfully for character unlocks where you can just quickly go hack a computer. Those are brilliant. And then uh, Injustice, uh, the original Injustice. I haven't played Injustice 2, but man, you know, Injustice 1 is, you know, that, that Nether Realm fighting mechanic, uh, you know, it's just, it, it feels like heavy, like there's weight behind your punches and stuff. Like, I. It's it's so much less cartoony and comical than, than you know the Ultimate Marvel series, um, but still just as nuanced and and intricate with all those moves. Um, so a quick one in that again, I boosted that with two you know two two controllers, nice and easy. And then I I just did a couple quick ones in Gianna Dream Runners um, again, 
local multiplayer. It's so great having multiple controllers, guys. And you can set all these easy things up to do. Um, that That's a bit about it. But, you know, so as far as my win of the week, I guess... Eight of my random to-do lists off the table. Um, I will I will cover more of what I did next week. I'm back, finally back on the show. Uh, you know, able to. Uh, I mean, man, summer's just been insane for me. So I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you're putting up with with Randy and Peru. They get to do a great job. So I guess with that, let's hear what they have to say and and talking to Smirnov. So take it away, guys. Hey, thanks for that awesome intro, Freem. I gotta say, I think. I think it was the best one you've done so far. Just, it was awesome. So, uh, hey, everybody. I'll be running the show today, and joining me, as usual, is Randy. Randy, how are you doing? Eh, it's been kind of a miserable week. Miserable? Yeah. That doesn't sound like you little, at all. A little rainy. Well, yeah. We'll just leave it at that. All right, all right. That's leave good. it at that's... to start off on a real great positive note. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and joining us, we have guest host Smirnov. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing okay, but I think I can probably uh, go with Rainy myself, just because if I lose power and suddenly cut out of the podcast, that's because of the storm this year. So. <laughs> you know, that's, I actually that's just for kinda, me. I got a notification. I'm the cause of that. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you set your uh, storms to come in when we were recording? Come on. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it goes in the microphone, goes through the lines, affects the internet. You know, oh, yeah. most of the East Coast, not Best Coast. <laughs> I actually just got a notification before we started recording on my phone that there were severe thunderstorms coming. And I'm like, I didn't even, it's like not raining or anything. It's not even cloudy out, so I don't know. But I guess we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully all three of us make it through the show without any power-related issues uh, I say we jump right in and do our win of the week. And because nothing of any significance really happened this week, I think I'll start uh, because I finally hit my projected milestone of 70% completion rating. Um, now, you know, some of you people, some of you completionists out there are scoffing and laughing at me, but I worked really hard because when I really started going after achievements, I think I was at like 48, 49% or something like that. Um, so it's taken me a good bit of time, but I, I, I said when I got to 70, I uh, was going to include all DLC in, on TA because that was that was only using uh, own DLC. So I did. I reached it. I beat uh, ODST, completed that game and reached my milestone and then immediately switched and dropped from 70 to 63 percent. So that's going to take Oof. me a good chunk of time to get back How up many- to... How many games are on your tag? Uh, I can tell you right now, 409. Oh, yeah. That's going to take a little bit. Yeah. It seems to be, uh, I think it was 130-something for uh, each percentage point, as long as I don't open that's, any new games. but That's uh, similar to me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm about 120, I think, and I have a similar, I have like 416 <laughs> games or something. There's a- there's so I imagine I won't be hitting seventy percent again until at least I don't know, next year. Let's it but out. it was very Sorry, exciting work for, me. for that day. Um, Randy, something really Shh. exciting gotta, happened gotta, gotta in the uh, big rigs department, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I call it really exciting, but it's probably the most exciting thing that's happened to me this week. Um, I just this afternoon at work actually, I signed a mutual NDA with uh, the with ID at Xbox. Which doesn't mean I'm accepted yet. If I was accepted, that would be fantastic. Um, but that means I'm through to the second phase of the application process, which is exciting. But doesn't talking yeah. about the NDA violate the NDA? I don't oh, think about no. the, I don't think talking about the NDA itself. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about I'm the kidding. contents of the NDA. <laughs> Those will be published in the show notes uh, for everybody. Oh, absolutely. At. Just every, everything they've sent me. Straight in the show notes. I mean, <laughs> Shovelware Empire is breaking the mold here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's exciting. Is there, uh, I mean, obviously without, you can't tell us everything, but I'm sure, do, do you have any idea of a timeline about when you would learn about uh, if it was accepted or not or anything I like that? I mean, they've been really fast to respond so far. So I'm guessing it's not the busy season. Um because, I mean, pre-NDA, it was, I mean, they were responding within 24 hours along the way. They say in their automated response emails, like, within three business days. So, like, yeah, it's it's been, like, 
less than 24 hours every time. So I'm hoping it's quick, but I do have to put together another demo because oh. I, I have the old demo, but it doesn't have a lot of the newer stuff in it because we've done a lot of work on the game since then. I think the old demo was actually before we rewrote the whole game, which doesn't look much different on the game end, but it makes a lot of difference in you know the way we did things and develop things and stuff like so that. So with your limited knowledge, what if everything went perfectly, ballpark it for us, when would we see big rig is on the xbox well now that de- that depends because the biggest thing is probably my motivation which i have a hard time motivating myself to work on anything a lot of the time um but i mean we could probably because we still have to we have to put in i have to script the cutscenes. i have to add achievements i have to add the trophy and I have to add the collectibles. So I, I want to say there's probably 15 to 20 hours worth of development time left. Maybe, maybe less if we're really efficient. Um, I don't know. I mean, a couple months. Cool. If, if everything, I mean, depends on how long this all takes. There, there's a bug that needs to get fixed before I can make the demo which should be, I assume it's easy, but who knows? I mean, with bugs, the nature of bugs and fix that and 10 other things will break. So we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I anticipate to get the application in this weekend. So I guess, I guess what I'm asking is what's going to come out first, Cuphead or Big Rigs? Probably Big Rigs. Nice. All right. Yeah, I, well, when's Cuphead's release date? Th- End of the- Was it September. I don't know. I, uh, maybe no. Cuphead. I mean, we could go for a simultaneous release. I mean, I could compete <laughs> directly with Cuphead. S- September 29th. Well, to be fair, Cuphead also has hand-drawn graphics. That's true. It does. <laughs> so, you know, you would definitely compete with them. But um, but does Cuphead have the biggest feature that Big Rigs presents in its trailer, which is over one year in development? <laughs> Well, they definitely can boast that. Oh, yeah. yeah. They definitely do. I'm, I'm kidding. But that is actually in the Big Rigs trailer, though. That we, we marketed that as a feature of as over one year in development, which I thought well, was pretty funny. Hopefully hopefully this will mean good things for uh, Shower Empire so. going forward. And if you're accepted, you get a free dev kit, which is kind of cool because I'd kind of like to have that in my collection. Oh, that I mean, would be cool. Yeah. Use it to work on big rigs with because <laughs> I'm totally going to test it a lot. Right, 4K. I will see. No, <laughs> I was thinking that. I was actually thinking it because we joked about it early on in development because, like, the, the resolution that I scan the stuff in at is like well over 4K. It's like 6,000 by 4,000 or something ridiculous. So, like, we could actually, it's scaled down to 1080p. So, we could actually just upscale it to 4k and see it as 4k <laughs> graphics well then you would have to fill all you know 20 gigs worth of uh, update space now, just just to say it's bloated funny thing funny thing you say that um there is an early idea that may still be a thing is there was going to be a day one patch so the game as it stands i think is like 600 megs or something just because of the really high re- like a lot of that is just the really high resolution scans of everything um is we joked about having a like 25 gig day one patch that's just an empty file like it, there's nothing <laughs> in it it's just a file that's empty that does absolutely nothing that takes up 25 gigs of your hard drive oh obnoxious. which we may still do because i think that idea is absolutely hilarious but and and then we'll or no we'll we'll do it and then release patch notes and say added twenty five gigabytes of empty space or something <laughs> like that in the patch notes and that's it like nothing else in the notes. Or so, you can do the the harmonic harmonics approach and say this is twenty five gigs of awesome. No. <laughs> All right, all right. But see, I'm not going to charge thirty dollars for the title update. See, no, that's the difference. I know. No, 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 no. <laughs> for content, we we're not going to get back the on the rock band place. train now. Uh, okay, well, so yeah, hopefully in the future uh, we're going to hear some some more positive things coming. Uh, and uh, I know good luck to you. 
Well, I guess I guess the other thing that I did this week that was significant um, is I actually registered Shahor Empire as a company. So that's why I was applying to ID. I was waiting to register as a company. So now I have the doing business as name Shahor Empire. So I can legally put that on documents and things when I'm doing business as Shovel or Empire, which is hilarious to be emailing Xbox as the company Shovel or Empire. Uh, Do so you have then, a title? See, I called myself owner in the application, but I was thinking I should be like emperor or something. Oh, yeah. Make yourself something awesome. Like totally. a, like emperor at shovelware empire i mean that's a pretty cool title uh or like king shoveler or something <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um yeah no you need to come up with something more creative at least for your business cards and your um your email signature it's like uh, oh yeah the, i didn't i was like i don't think business cards are gonna happen anytime soon but yes the email signature yeah emperor oh. emperor shovelware empire i, I, I could put it on my linkedin you could. Actually, you could. Uh, see, look, things are turning around. Things are looking yeah, great. Okay. Uh, little, little, sure. ray, little ray of sunshine. It sounds pretty big to me, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully everything goes uh, smoothly and, and not too long from now, we will all be earning achievements in, uh, in big, big rigs. rigs. That would be great. All right. So, uh, Smirnov, you got anything for us? Anything exciting happened to you recently? I mean, if you really try really hard, I'm sure you can find some. <sighs> My dog got some shots. Uh, <laughs> oh my! Is he okay? <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> no, I did take a uh, number one for uh, Gamer Square leaderboard worldwide. Yay! Instead of just Canada, so. insert has fantastic celebration music here, Randy. Hey, I'm not. I'm not that fancy at editing. editing yet, okay, <laughs> well, you got to keep it. You got It's your cheer. That's all we get. Yeah. As of recording, I still hold it. That's that's probably may not be true by the time we. We go live, but uh, yeah, as of right now, it's been about a week, and I've uh, managed to stay number one. So, is it that close? What what is it right now? Uh, last time I checked, it was around two thousand. Oh yeah, so it could yeah. be uh, yeah swept yeah. swept away pretty quickly. So we actually talked about this. This whole thing was going down right when we were recording last week. So we had some conversations about it, but of course, we would love to hear it from you. This just a story on how this whole thing went down and. Uh, like how amazing it's been. Celebrities are probably calling you. Everybody's trying to get your autograph. Tell us, tell us the whole, whole thing. <laughs> sure. So, um, first of all, last week was Canada day, uh, when, when things were going down, it was actually the day before, but, uh, so we had a long week off work, um, up here and I just took a few extra days that week as well. So I kind of started with a, a clean slate, not having to work that week. Um, and then I also had this kind of backlog of games that were pretty quick that I hadn't gotten around to yet. So I kind of started with games in the three to four hour range and did a few of those in a day. And then I kind of started slowly, you know, whittling it down to, you know, two to three, one to two type games. So I kind of did it in reverse quick order as opposed to dropping everything up front. I kind of just phased it all across the board as I started scoring. So... Just, just no, trying was, to uh, flush out anything that might have been a quick hiding out there on me or anything like that. I'm yeah, I was going to say that was smart, so we could see his response or, yeah. or delay it at least. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. did you did you have the knowledge that? Uh, so, I was actually literally just looking at one of the news crawlers I have that just it finds things that I search for and, and gives me uh, articles related to it, and it said uh, top Xbox uh, Live achiever. Goes on, gets married, and loses number one spot. Oh, yeah, and, I think that uh, one was that Lad Bible or something like that. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. that was really funny. I thought. Uh, yeah. So, did you know that he was going to be, you know, predisposed uh, this weekend as well? Well, just- no, no, no. He he was already married and had his honeymoon. I waited till after that. Oh. I, I had thought about uh, that, but I, I decided that that it would be better to wait till after because you don't want somebody stressing about something like that while they're uh, either on their honeymoon or dealing with their wedding or anything like that. So, I actually. Uh, held on to things a little longer than I might have otherwise. So, oh, so that, was a, that was very stand up. I guess a question for me is, is did, did you intend to overtake on this weekend? So, or did it just, it was a kind of, I thought there was a good chance of it happening. I mean, all the, the cards in line up to, in a way that I was close. I mean, I, I was going to play with the days off and drop the games I had to drop. Cause that's what I want to do with my staycation anyway. Um, for those couple days. 
So that was going to happen regardless, but with going into it and, and the, the, the difference in score at the time, it seemed pretty likely to me. So I, I will say that I wasn't shocked that it happened based on how things were looking. Yeah, but it wasn't something that you just were no, like, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm yeah, going to overtake yeah. Stalin this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, plus, you know, the response is not something anybody can plan for, right? Um, he really kept pretty good pace um, the first couple of days. You know, I, I thought if it was going to happen, I might have had it by, you know, already the Thursday or something. And it almost went right all the way to the Canada Day on Saturday. So um, Friday night was, and, and it took uh, energy cycle to put me over the top so. uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. a gem of a game if ever there was one no. right? i almost didn't do it on friday I, I but it was like a 400 point difference and i had that in the back of my pocket and i figured okay <laughs> yeah. at least if i'm gonna make it and if he's gonna counter you know tomorrow or saturday or whatever i can say i i had done it um and then i did that and then i still had all those one hour-ish games left over right so i just kind of piled that on all on on saturday so I had the gap pretty good, and he's he's done a really good job to to whittle it back down to to two thousand, and I think it's even been lower in the last bit. It's just I had a pretty good day today. I've been pretty busy this week work work as well, so I mean it was back to reality for me this week. And um, there were some quickish games that came out, and some other things I managed to get done that had some payoff from before that I'd been working on. But all in all, um, yeah, he's 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 done a pretty good job shrinking it back down. So you figure. By the time we release, it might <laughs> there, there's a might chance be back that, yeah. to the status quo. <laughs> might be back to the status quo. I mean, it is the weekend, but but I also don't have uh, the same games, you know, yeah. left to go that I that I had going into the break last week. So I, I imagine that the situation is a lot like when uh, a new president comes into office, right? Like you get <laughs> you get all the security detail and and somebody hands you the nuclear codes. Like maybe did Bill Gates give you a call? Yeah, like, that, that's is, right. I got the football now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what has the response been like? Uh, well, you know? actually, uh, I mean, I, I've definitely been inundated with messages and on Twitter and, and both on live and, and TA and comment sections. And I, I even put a blog up kind of going over what, the, what had happened. Um, and all of it's, you know, I will... For, for the internet, well, so of the messages I've gotten, <laughs> 99% have been positive. Um, on my blog, it's been 99% positive. In the comment sections on news articles, it gets a little lower than, than the high percentage that uh, you would expect. Um, no, not Trolls, expect. It's Trolls more like what everywhere. you would expect, I guess, is yeah. what I should say. So. Yeah, well, at least but, it's, is it on YouTube is the question, because, I mean, that's like the ultimate low for comments. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, I I know Rand did a YouTube. He mentioned it on his uh, his channel. Um, mm. I didn't check comments or anything like that to see if it's if it's all been bad or not. But um, yeah, that's the only place I know of on YouTube that that made mention of it. Mm-hmm. Did so you you're, get? You're probably pretty safe then for yeah. from the YouTube <laughs> commenters. Did you did you uh, did you receive any re- response from uh, Microsoft? You get free games forever now. Or, no, I, I mean, well, no. I I, also, I did get a response from Xbox Canada. They 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 sent a congrats on Twitter. Um, oh, and and were very positive about it. And 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 some of the actual people who used to be at Xbox Canada who moved on to other roles uh, within Microsoft sent the messages as well. So that was all positive too. Did they um, did they do that on Canada Day? Because shouldn't they have had the day off as well? No, I don't think they saw it right away on Canada. I don't think oh, it was okay. maybe until Monday or something. I was going to say, I just wanted to make sure that everybody, you know, had that long weekend to, <laughs> to enjoy their time. I think some more people noticed when I put on my blog, right? Because that's when something went out on my Twitter. I hadn't really said anything um, up until then, just because I was working on the blog. <laughs> yeah. My, my social presence is small simply because, I mean... The time I have is spent gaming. I mean, that that's how I do what I do, is is by spending the extra time I have doing that. Not uh, that that's why you know I'm never gonna. Uh, I'm not. I won't say never, but the chances of seeing me stream or anything along those lines are um, slimmer than not. Uh, simply just because of the overhead and the time involved. Um, you know, ninety percent of the time or more, I'm not even playing with a headset when I play games or anything like that because you know there's family activities going on around me and I'm doing mostly single player stuff. The only time I'll be wearing a headset is if I'm boosting or something along those lines. So, um, well, it's still uh, very exciting. How, how long was it? Was it 10? How long? Oh, was, how, oh yeah. I think, I think it was over 11 years, just over 11 years. Cause I think yeah, it was just recently years. that you said 11 years. Yeah. So, I, I mean, 
just to see some movement at the top is <laughs> Yep. Is pretty pretty fantastic. So, you know, congratulations to you and and for all the hard work that you've put into it. That's uh, that's quite the feather in your cap. Even um, even if uh, maybe it disappears from you in the next few hours or whatever. But yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lose it. Like I said, it, it was a nice thing to happen for, from my standpoint. For me, it's always been about completed games. Um, I, I'm still number one in that by a pretty far margin. Um, so you know. It's nice to have both, and I'm very happy. To, actually, all three, because I mean, I'm also leader on TA, right? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's. I really, I mean, and I appreciate all the great comments I got from people and, and all the support people give me over time. So it's definitely, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. So we have a, uh, some some questions for you specifically uh, from the community. Um, Big L asks, uh, "Have you ever, if you ever go back to any completed games just for fun?" No, um, well, I've played uh, on my PC uh, EverQuest 2 once in a while. Not not often and not recently, but I have gone back to that one. Um, that one didn't have achievements, and I, I think I've mentioned before that EverQuest was kind of my first big MMO. Not 2, actually, the first one, but um, I've gone back onto that once in a while. With, my daughter sometimes fires up and stuff like that, so I'll hop on and go harass her or something like that. But um, for the most part, no, I don't go back to games after achievements are done simply because there's so many games left where they aren't uh, Yeah. from that standpoint. I mean, my goal is still to get everything I can out of every game I have. Um, you know, in some cases it's not going to be hundred percent simply because servers are gone or there were glitch achievements, but I'm not afraid to start something simply because that's the case. I'm still want to get everything I can out of that game. So, so uh, this is kind of a related question. Do when you're at work, are you always like thinking and planning your games? Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty organized. I mean, I have to kind of go into it with the knowledge of with the time I get, what am I going to do? Um, you know, and, and I, I kind of can over time prioritize, you know, do I want to do something quick? Do I want to finish off something I've already started? The biggest push for me lately has been getting my completion percentage back up, um, which I've actually done a couple percentage points already this year. But every percentage point I gain means giving 700 some odd achievements in games I've already played. Oof. Um, yeah. So, and I've done it. I mean, I, I think I was like 76 or something earlier this year. I was hoping to get to 80 this year. Um, and that's still with kind of counterbalancing that with, okay, I haven't gotten a lot of score this month. I still like to hit around 20,000 a month still. So maybe I'll, you know, just drop in something that I can hundred percent and, you know, somewhere in the three to five hour range. Um, so uh, it, it is. I do plan it out. Uh, I do some, you know, game scouting ahead of time to see if there's any, if there is anything available on the various sites as far as you know walkthroughs or at least some sort of roadmap or guidance or something along those lines. Um, to say, you know, if you're going to tackle this, do this as a starting point. Um, and if there's any YouTube videos or any guides, I mean, I miss text walkthroughs. I think they're a lost art. I mm. think anybody who puts one up, I, I applaud them and thank them, and please continue to do so because. Um, it's it, it, it sometimes feels like it's doubling your time to watch a video. Um, and the other thing is often um, my wife's involvement with what I do will be, she'll actually sit there and read the text walkthrough to me while I'm playing the game. So a, a lot of games that do that, we actually play together that way so that she's sitting there with me and we're doing it together. So it's, it's still kind of family time, if you will. Uh, oh, that's cool. If it's something like that, if it's a video walkthrough, if it's a quick game, if it's something she's not interested in watching, I'm on my own. But um, long games, story based games, role playing games, you know, things like that, we try to try to try to do that together. Yeah, I uh, I, I agree with you. I'm I ninety nine times out of hundred, I'm I prefer text uh, walkthroughs over video walkthroughs. Yeah, I agree as well, especially well, and not necessarily just that, but the other thing that is. I think is also kind of a lost art is the collectible map mm -hmm. where you have a map with every collectible on it. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, you can see exactly where it is in a video, but you have to watch so much of that video to yep. know where that location is. And maybe it's just that. me, but YouTube buffering is horrible. Like if I have to go back like 30 seconds, sometimes I might as well yeah. just reload the page and start totally. over. It's, it's and kind of try to keep track of where I was. Yeah. Cause I, it's, it's great at buffering ahead. Yeah. But once you're past it, it's just like it just purges it instantly or something. And then it when has I, a hard time catching up. When I was just uh, recently doing 
ODST, I had those collectibles to pick up. And there were, I had side by side the video and the uh and the and the actual map itself. And the map is just so much easier, so much quicker. Just be like, oh, you know, drop the waypoint there, just get to it, and generally usually you can find it without having to scroll through the video eight times to try to find the right spot. And yeah, no, I, I definitely prefer uh, uh, the non-video walkthroughs, it's depending. I mean, there are certain circumstances, of course, where I think the videos serve their purpose, but it's just so much easier when you're when you're not dealing with with those. And I get that the text ones are more work. I mean, I appreciate the, the effort involved because it's, you know, record something and edit it is a lot easier than free and have somebody else look it over run through it on a clean tag to make sure it's right all that kind of stuff that, that a text walkthrough really would and, entail and just describing areas too i mean yeah. that that takes a lot and and i agree that it's the one nice thing about the rise of the video walkthrough is that now we actually have walkthroughs for almost everything almost immediately yeah Be, because you know you, you've got the, the combination like you have people getting paid to make them because youtube ad revenue you know you've got the quicker turnaround time people probably enjoy doing it more so you get all that and then at least you have something for every achievement because i know going back to older games in particular there's just nothing like you want to find info there might be one bad text guide and that's it unless it was a really popular game they got the full walkthrough treatment which seemed to be kind of few and far between so there are some games that I don't understand the, p- the purpose of making a video guide for, like uh, the Telltale games. Like, it's so <laughs> easy to just be like, go over to this person to talk to them, do this, and then choose that. And it's just, it seems like so much extra effort to make an entire video. Like, y- you would literally have to sit there and watch for 10 minutes when you could read in 30 seconds what you have to do. So, uh, again, that's, of course, that's a... But that's a most of the Telltale example. games are just play the game though aren't they do they even have any choice i know minecraft had one choice achievement right right if it's well you among know, us going... you have to do some stuff for yeah. the uh, oh, okay the stories right there's a couple of it there's a couple of games that have some non-story based achievements but you know usually when you're looking up a guide you're, you're trying to go as, through as, as quick as possible so uh i think that's generally what they're for because you can spend a lot of time in, the, in those games just talking to people that isn't necessary so oh, okay i see what you're saying yeah so it's just it's just kind of an easy way to get through it but uh anyways um sir jl asks uh about some of your other interests uh maybe uh some books or movies you got anything uh exciting going on you know because we we spent a lot of time here talking about games but is there anything else uh exciting that you've been uh enjoying lately yeah i mean i i go we go, i go to the movies with my family f- pretty often i mean there's there's a theater in town that's pretty close by it's got reclining reserve seating and all that good stuff so we oh it's nice um try to and, and some pretty good deals on different nights so we yeah we go i've seen a couple of really recent movies i just saw baby driver this week um Ooh, how was it it was actually really good i mean well if you like a driving you know racing not a racing but a, a heist type movie with getaways and and, and it has a, a, a good soundtrack kind of rolling throughout the whole movie because of the, the whole framework of how it's set up um a lot of fun so yeah, no, I mean, I, I I've seen that. Yeah, I I don't see every new release because I'm not always interested. But uh, if if there's something decent out or that at least piques my interest, we'll we'll, we'll go in, out to the theater and see it. I'm so pretty I'm excited. Like, I have my tickets to go see Spider Man tomorrow morning uh, <laughs> with my roommate. So I'm a big Marvel yep. guy and yep. uh, very very excited about that movie. So. And very, very salty that Sony has that exclusive Spider Man <laughs> game. Still, still upset about that. It bothers me. Uh, the only solace I I take is in the fact that his stupid white suit is super ugly. But anyways, that's the but tangent. Now, on a positive note, though, for fans of Crash Bandicoot, I don't know if it's oh, been yeah. officially confirmed, but it is almost definitely for real coming to Xbox One. I that's mean, good. we're talking like four different retailers listing it so in it's all you the, know, all various countries. Yeah. But I mean, I'm like with box art, with everything. So I'm really hoping for that because I really like the the original, at least Crash 2 and 3. Crash 1, I didn't really like at the time. But I'm sure going back to it, I will enjoy it very much. That's good, cause my daughter has a PS4, and uh, she pretty much, like, Crash was on the two games that she has on it. So And then yeah, and and she had her friend over that they grew up playing it together kind of thing on the Xbox. Yeah. They ended up pulling out of the PS4 and throwing in the old Xbox 360 version instead because it was... 
<laughs> they just didn't like it as much on the PlayStation. Oh, game. see, I like the originals a lot yeah. more, but um Well, they played a co-op, right? When they added the co-op stuff. Oh yeah, see, I stopped playing. I think I stopped playing after. Oh, which one was it? The Wrath of Cortex. I think the one that came out, the first multi-platform one. Um, I really didn't. I felt that when Naughty Dog stopped doing it, it lost a lot of its kind of core. I don't know exactly what it lost some magic, and it was then it just kind of became mediocre. So I I haven't played one since then, but. I would very much like to go back to the original three with, you know, not potato graphics. Yeah. <laughs> and because I mean Crash One looks pretty rough. Like it's it's been a while. I'm sure the gameplay is still solid, but it's been a while. So I'm I'm really looking forward. That that is a game I'm actually looking forward to, especially because it was so well received on PlayStation. Um and I think I think it was a proper redo that was done to it. So I'm hoping the the only Crash games I ever spent any time with was the uh, Mario Kart clone. Uh, I can't remember. What oh, that called. one wasn't bad. Crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing. Yeah, yeah it was not terrible. That one was that still is... done by Naughty Dog. The party game was super terrible though. Crash Bash. Um, worst cheating AI in any game probably <laughs> almost ever. Like it was, it was ridiculous. We played Mario Kart Eight because I gotta tell you, it's pretty bad in that. But uh, cheating AI, yeah. No, Crackdown. Crackdown is the worst because you can't beat them unless you kill them. That's the only. Oh, way. you're talking about the racing, the stuff, DLC. Right? Yeah, yeah, that is impossible. You cannot. It is not possible to beat them. I am convinced that the only <laughs> way to win is to kill them all, and it takes forever. So you love that game, right? hate that game <laughs> anyways <laughs> moving on uh so yeah that was that was all the questions we had specifically for you smirnov but uh we'll move on but i'm sure we're gonna broach this subject many times but again uh congratulations to you i mean it's uh really an amazing feat a, a wonderful thing and uh we're excited to see what you do in the future thank you so let's do just a little bit of news guys some stuff came out and very soon people can Possibly. Well, no, no, it's been confirmed, actually. But uh, game gifting has been confirmed at this point, which is kind of crazy that it's a feature they don't already have. Like, what's the holdup? Why doesn't this exist? If, you know, please take my money kind of thing. Like, if I want to give somebody a, a game, why can't I do it now? But uh, are you guys looking forward to this? Do you think you'll use it at all? I uh, probably won't use it, but it's kind of a big deal because the only place you can really do this is Steam. I mean, if Xbox is the first platform to allow that, that's that's kind of a big deal. And now, as much as I'm opposed to the digital future, I mean, you're not going to you, say you, no to free you, games. You can you can still buy a disc and give it to someone. <laughs> uh, you know, just saying, everyone. But uh, but not every game is a disc. So no, I, can't, I know, I, can't, I know, you know, I I can't give. For example, I wouldn't be able to give big rigs to some some friends, but exactly. maybe I would if uh, I had that option. But the the other thing too is, I think at least from the U.S. point of view, is unless things have changed since I moved out of Canada, most countries other than the U.S. do not have the option to go to a place like GameStop, buy a digital code, and just give it to anyone. Yeah. You you don't you can't do that. Like you don't you don't buy digital games at a store. You buy them from a marketplace. Um, so yeah, and that's where I would probably use it is I mean there's a number of friends with you know kids my daughter's age and stuff that we give EB just you just have to give them a gift card or an Xbox Live Cash or something like that and if you actually want to give them a new game instead it makes it a little easier to make sure they're getting the new game with it and stuff right yeah um, so fr from that standpoint I, I think it's it's pretty cool, cool. yeah because because in the U.S. and that's something I noticed at first when I was visiting and I would go to GameStop is that they have like digital game digital game download cards for that is specifically for you know game X yep. hanging on the wall that you can just buy it give, it has a code on it and you can give They've it to They've had that for Minecraft for a long long time I'm pretty sure Oh I mean we're talking like even X I want to say XBLA games maybe not XBLA but like at least no, they, they, I remember Marvel Blast you still like a Marvel Blast card or something like that even and stuff so yeah even back that far i mean really there were s there were some that came in bundles i mean i know that's how i got joust and robotron you know that's true because amazon sold um sold codes for joust 
way back, like way, way, like 08, 07, probably. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and that isn't, yeah, definitely not the case in most other countries, for sure. That's the very US thing. So, I, I think it'll be more, like you said, kind of more significant in, you know, places like Canada where you have that situation and say, hey, you know, here's a, here's a code for the game you wanted instead of here's a gift card buy that game you wanted yeah. and then hope that it gets bought there will be protections in place for this but i would really love for there to be um the option to give free games as gifts because well i mean i i would use it for trolling uh most mo- most mostly crewmate uh I gave him as many free Star Trek games as I could and uh, things that he hates. But um, I wonder, yeah, I wonder how that's how that's going to work. Or what if the game you have, you know, I give you a gift next week, it goes on sale and you redeem it. How does that work? You know, lots of little questions like that. Um, I don't see myself using this feature that often, but it's just it surprises me that it's not been available um, to this point. My guess is it's probably a legal thing. Because I know Steam had lots of issues with account theft. Um, with when they introduced Steam trading, so like right now on my Steam account, because I needed to do some testing in Lost Planet Two PC if I ever go back to it. Um, when last time it was on sale, I bought two extra copies of it that I can just store on my account as not even as codes, but just as a redeemable item on Steam. If I wanted to, I can give that to someone. I can sell that to someone. So say Big Rigs is on sale for 99 cents and you buy 20 of them. Somebody hacks my account. So to steal those 20 codes, you know, what happens? And and there was a, a huge, huge issue on Steam when that first started of account theft. Um, so if they're going to do kind of an inventory, I mean, it, this, of course, is total speculation on how they're setting the system up. But if they're going to do kind of the inventory style system, that's something to watch out for, for sure, is and something that would take some development and implementation is how are we going to keep people's accounts safe or, you know, your credit card info safe. Somebody hacks your account and buys a thousand dollars worth of games gifted to their account. I mean, that situation is probably a little easier because you see, oh, somebody reported this account is stolen that just bought a thousand dollars with games for this account so we can just ban the other account and refund it but it's not, it's not always going to be that easy yeah i guess um i guess we'll see it hasn't i guess it's technically been officially announced but uh through through the through mike Ibarra's twitter there but not you know no official microsoft anything so we'll see what happens when they decide to implement this and uh you know i don't know um Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll get some people some some birthday gifts or something early Christmas gifts. We'll see. Moving on, uh, big news in Halo this week. We are actually fast, quickly, excuse me, approaching the ten year anniversary of Halo Three. Can you believe that? Ten years? That's pretty That's, crazy. That is insane. It's I still remember time. lining up at midnight to get Halo Three. Yeah, that's when you got that's the a, the cat helmet. Yeah. It was a big deal. I mean, I remember that. It was it was a big deal. And, you know, it was so late when I got home that I think I only played two matches. But the idea was it was there at home ready for me when I got home the next day instead of having to make another stop. But And it was just, I don't know, it's fun. The midnight release thing, is, at least it was. I don't know if it is now. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I haven't been to one in years. I wonder how they are now. But uh, you know, back in the day, it was a good time yeah, to go with your friends and stuff. I got my one oh, in a midnight release, my Xbox One. Uh, how was it? Yeah. It was fun. I mean, they knew me so well at the store, they actually let me in the store before they opened the general oh, nice. public. <laughs> <laughs> So well, now you'd be able to throw your weight around. You'd be like, yeah, that's to right. the world, you know. No, hey, no. give me a couple hours early, guys. Come on. You want some uh, free press? Uh, <laughs> but um, it, it's kind of interesting, though, because you know this just kind of brought up an interesting topic: is gaming has changed a lot in the last ten years, like a lot. Because you know, even even when Halo Three was coming out, I mean, it was a big deal, and it was I think it was the best selling game of all time when it oh, when yeah. it launched. Mm-hmm. And you know, we and we look now that was before Call of Duty was huge. That was before Call of Duty Four came out, 
and you know i see call of duty 4 kind of as a turning point in gaming but it was still it wasn't as mainstream as it is now is you know halo 3 was still and it and the people at the midnight release like there weren't at least at mine there weren't a ton of people there it was still kind of a more of a niche thing so i can uh, thicken my hipster glasses <laughs> <laughs> but you know now it's something that a lot of people do even casually so yeah it's just it's kind of cool and crazy to think back that halo 3 was almost 10 years ago it also kind of makes me think Halo 3 was the last really important Halo. Yes. Um, you well, know what I mean? Reach, Reach, Reach was, was pretty a, good. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I love Reach. I'm, what I'm saying, though, like Halo 3 was the huge release, like the big yeah, release. Yeah. By the time, like you mentioned, you know, Call of Duty was commonplace at that point. Reach, when Reach came out, it was just a little oh, more crowded. It was the. the I didn't gen- even. I didn't even buy Reach. I didn't play yeah, Reach until see? years after it came out. But no, that's a, a super good point because you're totally right. It was. And and obviously with the releases of Halo 4 and Halo 5, it's, it's just kind of going further into a more crowded marketplace. Halo hasn't stood out the way that it did. Halo 2, I mean, obviously Halo 1, of course, with the launch of the Xbox, of course. But once it had established itself, Halo 2 and Halo 3 were such monumental uh, events for Xbox gaming, it's it's just it's been it, ten years. It's just crazy to think it's been ten years. There's a reason we're talking about this, by the way. Uh, we kind of got sidetracked. It they've they've announced now that the remaining main uh, line Halo games are coming to backwards compatibility. So that is Halo Three, ODST, and Halo Four. The most important part of this announcement, which is super awesome, is that they are giving away all of the DLC for those games for free. So everybody can go and play all the DLC that they didn't in the first place, which is awesome because I've just recently kind of taken out on my journey to go and complete all of the old games, uh, Halo games, and was literally just planning on on buying all of these DLC packs this weekend or the next weekend. So this has saved me a lot of money, but it's also really fantastic. Uh, up until this point, it had just been Reach. Um, just Reach, I guess. And no, just Reach that was was backwards compatible. So now uh, those three games joined the rest of them, and uh, it's a pretty big, pretty big deal, I guess. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see how it competes with Master Chief, which already has all of those games uh, in it. So I wonder if those populations will will bloom with this uh, with this backwards compatible announcement. Uh, you guys both aren't going to go back to play any of these games. I, I, I assume. Oh, I will. I mean, not immediately. I haven't finished but... them. So. Oh, all right. <laughs> See, <laughs> but, but I have discs, so you know. The, the, yeah, I mean, I don't do a lot of backwards compatibility because usually I've either got something like Farming Simulator running on my Xbox One, and I don't want to tie up my profile to do backwards compatibility. Um, but but yeah, that's that's cool. I mean, I don't. I I assume the DLC will be free on the 360 as well because that tends to yeah. Be what oh happens. yeah, no, no, I, I agree there, but yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I I tend to go back to Halo 3 at least once a year when I go back to Canada and um, play games with my friends. Is is we that that's always our go to game. I mean, we played we played that game a ton back when it came out. We you know most of my friends are fairly competent. There's generally enough people online, and we just get together and and we play and we have fun and it's it's a great game. It's it's kind of one of the last great online split screen games because halo 4 didn't work even if halo 4 was decent and stuff um if, if like, you want to say that yeah i mean the multiplayer is not the multiplayer of halo 2 or halo 3 or halo reach i mean it was fun for a while but it was you know it's starting to get to the, the copycatting point of call of duty etc but yeah halo 3 it just it it, it aged very very well and and all of the aspects of it age very well, and it's great to play locally. So, I mean, I already owned all the DLC anyway, but this just means now we have a greater pool of discs to be able to play online with. Because usually we just I have to get my friend to drag around his his uh, ODST disc because I never remember to bring mine. And then if we have a vanilla Halo Three disc, we can't play everything together. So now 
So there was actually a lot of speculation that that's actually the reason that they uh, that they made all of the DLC free was because so many people would have had those those ODST discs, which included all of the Halo Three uh, multiplayer DLC. And in order to kind of just kind of bring that community together, that online community together, it just kind of made sense at that point. Uh, and then if you're going to do it for one game, you might as well do it for both, uh, because obviously... Well, the, I mean, they're doing it for each, too. Oh, are they? I'm, that's what it sounded like. It sounded like all of the backwards compat Every Halo game on the 360 now has all the DLC just as a title update. Including Halo Wars? Okay, I don't know not, how deep not not Halo Wars. I don't know how but, deep that goes. But uh there is another uh, interesting detail that I think you'll appreciate Randy is that you can play System Link uh with Xbox yes. 360s and Xbox Ones uh on Halo 3. So Which is awesome. And see that actually inspired me because I was thinking man Halo 2 is so much fun. I'm going back to Canada next week and I'm not bringing an Xbox with me so I'm only going to have the 360 that lives there. Because I'm not bringing a check bag because I'm tra- I'm going to like I'm going to Canada I'm going to California it's all in all in one trip it's a kind of a mess so I didn't want to have to deal with paying for a check bag a bunch or you know carrying an Xbox in my carry on although I do have the slim it's a little easier it's still a bit of a pain so I was looking I was like man you know I should get another copy of Halo Two. And then we can system link between the 360 and the original Xbox and play some Halo 2 LAN parties. I was like, man, that'd be so much fun. Because Halo <laughs> 2, Halo 2 is the best. I love Yo, Halo 2. You won't get any argument from me. It, it's just, yeah, it's it's the best. And man, it's just, how, I mean, how long has Halo 2 been? I don't even remember when Halo 2 came out. Like I, it was four? Oh, four or five, it's got to be. I'm looking at the listing on Amazon, but I don't see the release date. It was uh, 2004, November 9th, 2004. 2004, because like it's it's crazy because Halo wasn't even on my radar when Halo Two came out, and then you know once I got an Xbox and and I remember specifically it was on Boxing Day. I was like, you know, all my friends are talking about this Halo game. I you know I should I should get it. I'll give it a try. You know, just something to pl- basically something to play multiplayer when people were over. And then I was like, yeah, this is pretty fun. And then I got Xbox Live when I got it in 360 in the early days before Halo 3. And I mean, then, well, that was that. was that. Halo 2 on Live is doesn't get any better than that. And then they shut the servers down. And See, it sounds like you need to, to play some Master Chief Collection. It's a sad day. I know. You keep telling me that. I'm still <laughs> not going to solve my problem. Getting a second copy of Halo 2 will solve my problem, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway i'll so, reminisce yeah. about halo through halo 2 another time yeah the big news though uh big news uh, so just so the community is aware tuesday night generally is when we are boosting halo and right now we're working on halo 3 this news is fantastic it now allows everybody to uh if anybody wants to join us please, you're more than welcome we're going to be uh, boosting all the multiplayer stuff especially now that it's all free um, and then we'll move on afterwards, but right now we're working on Halo 3. Come join us, and uh, we'll have some fun and get some achievements. That is it for the news, guys. Let's move into some feedback. All right, first up, we have Koosh Moose, who asks, What games are you most excited to play that you rediscovered be- because of your bean dive? Um, not not a bean diver here. What about you, Smirnoff? Uh, no, I'm I'm working on my my completion percentage going the other way right now, so uh, I haven't really been dove. <laughs> uh, what about Divin? Uh, what about yeah, Divin? <laughs> Do- Dovin? Dovin? Uh, well, that's it, fine. We'll let we'll let Randy answer the question then. He'll be the, the savior of this question. Randy. Uh, no bean dive for me either. I'm just I'm just hitting an all time high for completion percentage. I'm uh, 27 achievements off of 84. Ooh. So that's impressive. That's exciting. I mean, it's getting it's getting up there. I mean, the having all of my online achievements done is a goal that's within sight, which is awesome. Like that's super crazy and something that I that's a goal I set for myself in 2012 that I thought was unachievable. You know, look and you know, I was looking at Quake and Gra and Kane and Lynch back then as impossible completions, which uh, is 
not the case. I did <laughs> now. I've done all of them, including two more versions of Kanan Lynch. So that's uh, it's exciting. Yeah, good luck to you. Yeah. Get it done. Got to get um, up to that, that big ninety. Oh, that would that'll that'll be a significant milestone. Yeah, that'll be a that'll be a nice one. I know uh, one game that'll help you get there. Uh, this little thing called Big Rigs. So uh, it will, <laughs> and especially if if the seven hundred achievements are allowed. <laughs> That's a whole percentage point for me. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. See, exactly. there you go. There you go. And then again on on Windows ten, maybe oh. some region stacks. See, that's what I'm hoping. Is like, could you imagine if I could release it in like? 10 20 different regions so people <laughs> would buy it 10 or 20 times good luck see, uh, see, that's you should the do key. it windows uh oh, windows uh, if you oh, do it japanese oh. don't make the menus convoluted <laughs> oh don't worry i've already got that covered <laughs> yeah <laughs> can you still release uh xpla titles it's something i'm gonna ask about because i would be very interested in that <laughs> that's another 400 points um i think you can no it's a thousand now yeah, but you actually have to pay publishing for that. It's not yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty oh, okay. I'm pretty sure there's some minimum standards there. But, yeah. I mean, you know, if enough money is, is raised, I would be very willing. Let's put it this way. I would be very willing to take every dollar that is generated by Big Rigs and pour it into doing a physical print run that doesn't sell a copy. I wouldn't even care. Just the fact <laughs> that I could say I, I produced a physical game. I know. Go bury it with the ATs in the desert. Yeah, exactly. I don't even care. Like, okay, I've got twenty thousand copies of Big Rigs in my basement. Whatever. Well, you know, they they dug all those copies up, so there's really just a big empty hole. So they got to fill it with something. They dug some of them up, but yeah, yeah. we can we can replace them. That's right. Uh, Structural integrity. uh, Yeah, I would. I would. That'd be crazy. I would love to do that, but uh, yeah, we'll get there. But yes, an Xbox 360 release is something I would. I mean, it would sell like 10 copies, but just just to do it again, even if it meant taking all of the money that was generated from the other sales and just losing it all just to publish it on Xbox 360, I wouldn't even care. (laughs) Well, there you have it, Koosh. We uh, we went from uh, a bean dive to landfills. So uh, we didn't actually answer your question because none of us are participating in the bean dive, but hopefully we gave you a little bit of entertainment instead. Only on the Z to Z podcast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, moving on, uh, Skeptical Mario asks, this is actually a really interesting question. What is the most significant source of pressure to play games that you don't enjoy? Is it cheap points, easy points, peer pressure, or completion? completion I'm kind of yeah, divided on this. Yeah. Completion, yeah. Number for one for you, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's I, the reason I do all of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that that's largely been all of my motivation lately is because, like, I just... It's gotten to the point after I finished Graw where now I can start cleaning up these things that I've kind of been picking away at for a long time. And really, Graw was kind of the last really, really long grind in my tag. So because I haven't really started any new ones, like it got to this point where I've got a lot of like 10 to 30 hour games in my tag that I just haven't really played. And I'm just, I've just been kind of, and that combined with random to do list, I've just been kind of going back to them. And then it, it just gets to the point where I'm not starting anything and I'm just finishing all this stuff. And it's like, man, like I'm just kind of on a roll and then it gets easier and easier to get the motivation to go and be like, yeah, I'm just going to do oblivion or I'm just going to do Superman returns or whatever because you've got this momentum going and every one of those games is like a big check mark on the started games the smaller and smaller started games list so i've i'm gonna try and ride that for as long as i can until i get burnt out on it but we'll see we'll see how that goes but definitely completion i mean that that is easily the biggest motivator for for playing games i don't want to play i i would say that i'm kind of split on this Uh, my completion is a is kind of what motivates me to do a lot of things, but probably just as much I would say is the actual number, the gamer score number at uh, at the end of the day. So I'm also I'm I've, I'm trying to balance getting everything I've started and just left done as much as I can, and starting new stuff that I can I can get some some serious points in. So I, I always have to find that balancing act. 
Um, honestly, peer pressure has never been a problem for me uh, or a motivating factor, I should say, until very recently uh, with this Titanfall thing. Uh, I actually have homework I have to do this week for Titanfall. Uh, so that's that's something new. Now, we have been working on this game for a long time, and I really I do just want to get it done. Uh, but uh, this is the the first time I would say that it's peer pressure that's led me. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we've, we, we've all been here every week, and it's like, yeah, let's get it done, move on to something new. Uh, but for me, it's it's probably, I don't know if I would call it cheap points or easy points, but I would say just points in general versus completion is a struggle that I deal with all the time. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my numbers up, but I also want to get that completion. I don't want to dent that completion. I only want, I only want that to go in one direction, which is also why. And, and you've heard it from both of these guys here. We aren't participating in the bean dive. So yes. Yeah. And, and to be fair to your point, I mean, I, the points obviously still matter because like I said, I will top up a given month, but only if it's a game I can get a completion in. Right, like I, I still am looking at that completion when I'm looking at the score quota that I set for myself or whatever it might be. Um, in a month. So, are you saying that you would sacrifice? So you would sacrifice the integrity of of what you're doing just to play Energy Cycle to get number one spot <laughs> in the world? Is that what you're saying? No, because, because I completed a... Energy Cycle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's true. It's, true. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's part of that 1736 <laughs> games that I finished. So. See, uh, it's it's interesting because I almost find gamer score insignificant at this point. Now, I love true achievement score. I think true achievement score is a lot more meaningful than gamer score, personally. But that's because I'm kind of a ratio junkie. But it's yeah, like I don't really pay that much attention to my gamer score. Like I see it once in a while, and like, oh, that's kind of gotten big, but. I mean that's that's kind of it. Like it's I, so funny. I don't I don't I really d- care about padding it that much. Like I'm totally fine with just sitting at you know whatever my gamer score is if it means getting my completion percentage up. Now that being said, I do like to binge once in, once in a while and do a bunch of easy games. But I don't know, easy games don't really do it for me. I I would much rather prefer I would much prefer working on a game that I either kind of want to play or go for a series completion that, that is hard. You know, maybe I could do five easy games in the amount of time I could do this one game, but it's a lot more satisfying to me to either, you know, ha- either it has a high ratio. It, you know, is like saints row four that we just play forever because we hate ourselves and, <laughs> and, you know, things four like that times over, it, yeah. instead of just, <laughs> Oh, this is another four hour game that came out this week. I guess I'll just get through it. And, and and the way I play my games is, is I do, even if they are an easy game like that, I do like to try and at, at least give it a shot, you know, to see what it's about before I really, you know, just try and complete it as quickly as possible. Um, it, it's so funny because, uh, you know, we, we, well, even the three of us, right, um, you, you have this kind of, completion completion matters and, and it matters uh but and then you're saying that your motivation is is ta i just i don't even look at i have absolutely no idea what even range my ta is i don't care i don't know i i i'm worried about my gamer score versus my completion percentage it's so interesting how we have these different stats and these different these different things and we we kind of create these niches for ourselves that, that this is what i am going to do you know i am going to be the you know whatever in complete i want to hit 90 percent in completion or i want to hit three hundred thousand gamer score or whatever i want to be number one in the world okay whatever we get it you know (laughs) uh but uh it's 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 just really interesting that it's so funny that we all have these we're all going for the same kind of thing but we there's a lot of shades to it that's really interesting Mm -hmm. Uh, i mean sorry go ahead i think that's kind of what's fun with with the achievement community too is you know we all like achievements but all for very very different reasons yeah. and when well, i got number one in ta that different. it was nowhere near as the same feedback that i got for number one in gamer score right as far as community wise so I, I i got congrats and people who said yay 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 when i got one in ta but that was like over a year ago right which do you uh prefer which which do you like to see increase oh, the most hands down my completed games i mean that's the one I can, I've considered myself number one in that for the longest. And 
that's that's the one that I kind of you know when I am dropping a quick game or something like that, it's it's to make sure I have a good buffer on completed games more so than gamer score. I mean, the, the, the gamer score is there because there's a lot of guys coming up still, and and um, so that's why that part of it. I mean, once you have something, you don't want to lose it. Number one is not something I I, I know I can't fight the fight to keep that one in place, but the uh, number two I've had for even longer, right? <laughs> I've been number right. two for super, super long time. Um, and I'd, I'd hate to lose a position there just because I didn't play something quick along the way. Sure, sure, totally. And I guess to clarify too, as I think gamer score is much more meaningful in the general gaming community than TA score. But you know, for real hardcore achievement people, I think TA score is a lot more meaningful because it puts a weight to how rare an achievement is, which I think goes a long way in kind of separating you know do you just play a lot of games do you complete a lot of games do you complete a lot of hard games do you play a lot of hard games you know things like that are you suggesting that you would not in fact have played 14 bazillion hours of Gra if that achievement wasn't super rare well i mean if it wasn't super rare i wouldn't have to play 14 bajillion <laughs> hours true, of Gra. <laughs> but um uh, no, I mean, I didn't. I did that for the completion more than the ratio. I mean, I could have gotten a 20 something, 24, 25, 26 ratio in much less time in another game, but I wanted the completion. Yeah. And I mean, just because the ratio in Gra is, you know, I mean, it's very high. Those achievements have a very high ratio, especially on the 360. Um, but I mean, there are games out there like much much higher and much easier to obtain but i think those achievements in particular have kind of their own prestige that even surpasses the ratio i mean just because they're they're legendary because there are very early achievements that a lot of people saw that have been around xbox for a long time that basically nobody really thought that they would ever get and then you know when somebody has that legit it's kind of, I mean, I remember when I first popped that game in and, and knew what achievements were, like I would try and find people that had that achievement. You know, I would look at the profiles on the top of the leaderboard just to see a profile with that unlocked because it was so like, it was just legendary because it's like, it's something that you don't think you'll ever see. Well, oh, they're still my highest ratio ones, right? Like in my, the Grau ones are your yeah, highest ratios. Still my highest ratios yeah. oh. wow. I think my, I think mine are, but, um, uh, rare replay is very close behind. Yeah, I but that's rare super. Yet. It's it. Do you feel like that's that kind of sh- exposes the flaws in the in the true treatment ratio? Because I mean, oh, think of and, the amount of effort you put in. To... And I am not saying that it is not flawed. <laughs> oh no, that's let, fine. Me, yeah. let me get. Well, but the <laughs> other thing too is you have to consider that the gra achievements were were very easy to get for a period of time. I mean, when uh, you're sure. when you're talking reset time like a hundred people got them in a couple of weeks. So that's going to plummet the ratio just from that, because now you've got a hundred people on top of the very few people that did it after they got pushed up. So you got rare replay. The difficulty never changed. Rare replay is a super difficult completion. I think Gra might even have more completions than rare replay. You think, Um, wait, hang on. You're saying that you, Oh, never mind. They're very close. I'm I'm very surprised because I would never in a bazillion years go for the Gra completion, but I am I don't know somewhat close eighty percent eighty five percent to completing rare replay and but if you're I not, wanted to you're not that last five fifteen percent which is going to be as hard as the first eighty five percent for rare replay. Well, that uh, I just it, I just I don't even see those two games in just even look, in the same league. That's because you're looking at Gra now versus Gra in do you remember when the reset was i did i i did it i wasn't i was i did it before the reset i'm pretty sure oh I didn't okay go the reset time um <laughs> anyway i did it the hard way I, i'm looking at it well not as hard as i mean okay. i did I it took me three months not over a year but it took unless, me three months as a ladder to do it unless somebody has completed gras since me i've played more gras than any other person in the world probably um, I think maybe one person has or is in the process of going for it, but I, like I will probably be one of the last people to complete that game just because it's so crazy. Like because in the time that I was actively working on it, both of the boards were doubled, which is just 
insane. Like I can't, it's just, I can't believe people did that. Um, and they were already super, super high and then you double it. But I'm looking at the average difficulty of getting those achievements over the entire life of Gra. So you, you had a period when the game first came out that it was very easy to get those leaderboard achievements because there weren't very many people playing, you know, then it gets pushed up a bit. People figure out how to boost. They get a little bit harder. Okay. People complain. It gets reset. It's very easy to get again and people are prepared for it. So a lot of people get it. Then it gets hard again. And then now it continues to get harder. I mean, it's probably not, it's not going to get any harder than it is now, but you know, it's at the time when you basically can't do it in less than a year. If you're playing for 24 hours a day, um, (laughs) I mean, I say playing. Which is not the case with Rare Replay. Playing and idling. But at the same time, Rare Replay is not time-consuming. It's difficult. I mean, it's time-consuming too, but it's largely difficulty-based ratio versus time-based ratio. What is the hardest thing to do in Rare Replay? Would you say it's Perfect Dark? Uh, It depends on how you go about Perfect Dark because you can bypass a lot of the difficulty stuff by playing multiplayer and having friends. Um, you have to get the single player stuff done too, don't you? Or no? Yeah. You- so, so you can get away with only playing the game on medium. Oh, okay. Well, which is that's, not that's super. That's- it's not easy, but it's not right. super, super crazy hard. Um, I'm just I I, I have well, experienced almost zero difficulty getting through the amount of very. Uh, granted, I have not done core, by any means. Blast core is very hard. <laughs> I'm just trying to. Um, I'm just trying to think of what game. I'm would just trying really to think of to. what what else too. I mean, it, it is time consuming. I mean, some of the there was one other game that I'm sure gave me a lot of grief. Those stupid RC car games. I hate those. Are them. those are just bad? I mean, they're not hard because you can. Well, actually, RC Pro Am One is tough because that last achievement, if you don't set it up properly, you have to replay the whole game. Oh God! Which is stupid. Um. Jet Force Gemini is hard. I guess. I don't know. It wasn't that hard for me. I I did everything except for the That's last. You, because because you played it a bunch. Yeah, I guess. I guess you're I mean, right. It, I don't know. It, I just it, it is it is not an easy game, even with the new controls. It, yeah, it's it, true. it took it's me true. a long time. That one took me a really long time. Just because, you know, I never played it. I mean, the playlists are not necessarily super easy. No, I actually haven't done those yet. Those, because those the because you says. can't rewind. You've got lives. I mean, those... See, you've done everything but the, the hard stuff, it sounds like. <laughs> it's probably true. It's probably true. Because, uh, I mean, the old games would be very hard if you couldn't rewind. Um, but, yeah, I'd say those... I mean, some of the 360 games, maybe. Um the orig- uh, original Perfect Dark's not super bad either. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, well, I mean, the controls are weird now, but uh, but uh, but you know what? We're we're off on a bit of a tangent here. I'm going to try yeah, to bring boy. it back. Uh, that's okay. I mean, that's what we do. This is yeah, uh, I know, I know. We but go, you know what? Actually, tangents. a really interesting kind of conversation would be to have in the future is try to general like give like a general roadmap for a rare replay and uh, our experiences with it because it's it's such a colossal monster of a game. Oh yeah. That, uh, we certainly could talk about that for ages and ages. And- so I guess just in closing, I'm and I'm not saying by any means TA ratio is perfect. I mean, really, I am kind of you know lowering the achievement of Gra and saying that yeah, you, know, you know, rare replay is a game you can do 200 hours versus Gra is a game you can do in you know, if you're lucky 3,000 hours at this point. But I mean, Xbox One has much, much, much higher ratios just as a whole. And I think that's largely to do with people are now much more inclined to have a few things spontaneously buy games on sale because something about all digital makes people just buy everything. I don't know what it is, but it seems to happen. And then, you know, you'll play it for two seconds, think it's lame and then never play it again. So you've got a lot of games that people have popped one achievement in and like three people completed it. So it's got this crazy, crazy ratio on it that just never seems to go down. I mean, I'm not saying that that's the case with Rare Replay, but Rare Replay is just the case of being a game with so many sub games in it. The same thing with Killer Instinct and Halo Master Chief is they get these huge, huge, crazy ratios on them because, you know, you have, even if you play 80% of it, you're still not getting stampers forever, which is the complete everything else. <laughs> right. 
because only 111 people have done that out of the 82,000 that have started it. So, you know, you might get most of the achievements, but if, if you don't get that one, the ratio doesn't go down. It just keeps going up. So I, th- I think that's kind of a flaw with the ratio, especially in the collection type games. I mean, collection as in a collection of other games that you can play most of that collection, but as long as there are achievements that are kind of the like really do everything type achievements, the ratio is going to be very inflated. And of course, free to play is a whole nother mess. But well, yeah. I, as in general, despite its flaws, I do put a lot more value on TA score than I do on gamer score, just because again, it does have you know it's got outliers, but so does gamer score. I mean, oh, you look sure, at energy sure. cycle. Energy totally. cycle is a freebie. And just as as a whole, I think it's a better measure. Uh, so Smirnov, as a hardcore completion guy, have have you started or completed any or all of those three games? The big ones, the, the Killer Instinct, Master Chief, or uh, Rare Replay? Killer Instinct, yes. Master Chief, yes. Rare Replay, no. So I no just, rare replay. Did you avoid it because of its... no, no. It's just I haven't gotten to it. Honestly, uh, yeah. there's nothing about it that I wouldn't do. Uh, like my goal is to play everything. Um, Master Chief. Somebody was doing one of the harder things and saying, "Hey, you want to hop in?" So I played it on my tag at that point. Um, for Killer Instinct, I was actually pretty far along, and then they started going crazy with all the achievements and DLC and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so every time I need to, you know, if I'm getting close to a percentage point and I only need a couple achievements, I'll probably find some low line fruit and killer instinct I can still mop up. Um, but but yeah, that's that's uh, killer instinct. I, I was pretty close to completion on um, before all the DLC and season and all that stuff. Uh, Master Chief just haven't gone back to it since I threw some stuff in my tag and rare replay. I just haven't done. I mean, the one thing that puts me off about rare replay was how much of it was just really backwards compatibility. Not really yep. new games and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. That to me was kind of like a, a cop out because I was at E3 when they announced it, and and they were saying, "Oh, you can get ten thousand gamer score in this one game and all this other stuff." Well, no, not really. If you'd already completed some of those yeah, games, if you already yeah. completed six thousand, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So that which kind of... was it was almost the case for me is I had done. Yeah, I mean, I started preparing when I suspected that's what they were going to do. But, I mean, really, most of that stuff I had already played anyway, and I just loaded it up. I mean, Perfect Dark Zero, I had a lot of progress in. It wasn't done, yeah. but, you know, I was probably about halfway. Cameo, I'd never played because I remember playing it back. I played it somewhere when the 360 first came out, and I thought it was, like, the worst game I've ever played, and I still kind of think that is a pretty terrible game. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> Yeah, but a lot of them like Viva Viva Pinata, Banjo, just it was just freebies, which is I mean it's kind of kind of nice just to get some freebies, but at the same time it would have been nice to get even more achievements from them. Yeah. Um have you have you completed most of the backwards compatibility stuff or are you kind of Yeah, just most most of BC scratch? ones in that list I'd already done, right? I did Viva Pinata, I did I haven't done both all of them. them. I have to finish off Nuts and Bolts. Yeah, I did both of them. Oh, yeah, me too. Nuts and Bolts. I I mean you I'm know. pretty far actually. I, I went back to it not that long ago and I made some progress and actually like, yeah, okay. And there's some I better blueprints online. It's just, yeah, well, it's we should kind of, we should give yeah. out the caveat here that for rare replay, you don't actually have to complete these games. You have to get 75 percent of the achievements in the game, right? Isn't that actually? Isn't that it's let no, it's 750 gamer scores. So nuts and bolts is even easier because it's got DLC. Oh right, well 70 yeah. percent of the original uh, uh, a thousand or whatever. But um, no, so, it's not even. I mean, it's it's just 750. So like, it can be any. As long it just checks the gamer score value of that game. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so like Banjo, that's got twelve fifty. You just have to get seven fifty of that twelve fifty. I think that's the only game that has that benefit, though. I think the rest don't have any DLC achievements ex- that are worth gamer score. So Cameo because they does, were all but they're zero pointers. Games. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. I haven't ever gone back to mop those up, but it's kind of because no, I have the completion I, I need to. and I don't want to do them. It's- <laughs> <laughs> well it, it doesn't it's not even for me it's not even that there's zero points it's just that i really hate cameo like i just think it's well, a they really were co-op bad... and stuff too right like anyway yeah sort of so some of them don't unlock in co-op unless it's local so you basically have to do like you can do it with a second controller by yourself it's really easy but it's just it kind of defeated the purpose of them being co-op by only being local so yeah it, those were bad i think without a doubt uh, well, yeah. anyways, to to bring it back to 
I mean, this I did have one point to, to what Randy was saying, though. Of of my top highest ratio sidebar, three of them are in free to play games, but that's because I did the really long hard stuff, right? Like I've got um, the one for Happy Dungeons. I got to level fifty in that one. I got the one for five hundred daily quests in Magic Duels. So that oh, one that's going to be a big one. Yeah, that one was on there, and then I have uh, one of mine is in Neverwinter too. So. But do any of those surpass Gra? No. Well, you know what? The 500 day for those quests in Magic was kind of hard at first because they weren't consistently giving new quests. So it was more than actual the 500 days that you had to get it and oh. do the quest. And a lot of them we had to do online. And it, anyways, that one was when you really, I really had to stay on top of because it was annoying. I actually had a spreadsheet where I was actually writing down which one. <laughs> and there's no tracker for it, right? So. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds um. awful. 500 days no tracker no thank you yeah. i guess the other i i meant um it, are are any of the ratios higher than oh the no 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 my gra is still in the top okay no 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 no. they're all in the, the 15 to 18 range so i think the only game i'm currently eyeing up that i want to do that has a higher ratio than gra last time i checked anyway was robotron 2084 get to wave 100 which to be fair is very 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 difficult um probably not as time consuming as Gra, but it's gonna take some time, that's for sure. So this was actually a fantastic question from from Skeptical Mario. Man, like we could I'm sure <laughs> we, we just talk went about. off on a whole tangent <laughs> on that one. <laughs> and actually now I now I have something else I want to say. Uh, just real quickly, um and I mentioned this story before, so I'm not gonna get in depth with it, but I, I literally bought a Windows phone so that I could get the series completion on Mass Effect, which I lost after Andromeda came out. I plan on going back, so that's no big deal. Um, and now, right now, like my big thing I'm working towards is now as much of the Halo completion, it's impossible, I guess, to get it all at this point, but as much of the Halo completion as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, again, just little things inside of these big numbers that we see all the time that really motivate us to do these these sorts of things. And what a great question for yep. all of these things. Uh, and I'm sure we'll come and, back. And I mean, this is something that comes up in Discord all the time is, you know, we argue, you know, why do you play this way? Why do you play this way? I mean, it's just that's just how you want to play. And, you know, if you don't care about completion percentage, that's fine. If you care about gamer score that's fine if you care about t it doesn't matter i mean we're all we're all getting achievements we all like getting achievements you know if we want to exclude some things or play things on a different tag or you know play games we don't like it's even though you're playing game you don't like you're still it's still fun because you've got this this game within the game of achievements so you know you're not you're not playing superman returns you're playing achievements (laughs) Uh, it's true. It's true. So let's move on um, because we spent a lot of time there. And Chin Doctor has an interesting idea, which is actually a really dangerous idea. I think I actually would hate this, but it's kind of related to what we were just talking about. He suggests that gamer score can be repeatedly earned for a game that you have completed. Uh, but you can only, and he gives this caveat, but you can only play one eight to 10 hour completion to get one million gamer score. So basically, you just have to play it. A thousand times. So if you could only play <laughs> one game to get a th- uh, to yeah, and you had to replay it a thousand times to get to a million gamer score, what would that one game be? And it has to be roughly I- in a lower time frame. No gras, because obviously you would never reach a million. Uh, but w- is there anything that you what would I guess what would you mind the least? Because it would drive you nuts after about ten times of playing the same game through, I assume. But is there anything that uh, comes to mind? I played I mean, Bioshock like six times, so I'm good with that one. Or no, I was oh. Bioshock too. <laughs> That's Bioshock a little bit longer than eight to ten hours. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit longer. It's, it's yeah. no, you know what? Once you know where all the collectibles are and what plasmids to buy, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's still like twenty. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. And the multiplayer, the multiplayer. Yeah, too. yeah, that's true. I, I would, I, I guess, I'd have a no multiplayer caveat on that one. Yeah, I mean, well, you do the Bioshock collection, one. right? It's, exactly. Yeah, I do the, the collection. The new one. Yeah. 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 I'm going to steal this from from Discord, but I'm going to have to go with Rocket League. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to steal that one straight out of Discord because it was a great answer. See, that one took me longer though. Like getting the rare, the drops I needed. That I was done everything else and literally just trying to get. The, the loop. Yeah. I mean that's 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 the fault of randomness, but yeah. the but you're having fun while you're doing it. So mm-hmm. 
that's, See, that's that's the whole that's thing it's like is rocket league can be fun for a very long time i i had actually i watched when chin doctor actually asked the question and i believe it was uh rocker dude who who suggested rocket league I, you know i'm not trying to show him up but i had definitely thought of that before he typed it out because generally <laughs> speaking my mind is is focused <laughs> is thinking, on rocket is league, thinking so, about sports league uh yeah so um i actually have a really uh, interesting takeaway from this Ch- chin doctor kind of gave us that eight to 10 hour kind of suggestion here. I think the bigger idea, the more dangerous idea that I alluded to earlier is if gamer score, if you could replay a game for all of the gamer score, say you go through, you get everything, you, you complete a game and you, well, this is a, a clicker heroes reference. Say you then ascend in that game and you can redo it and get all those achievements again, you just have to play through. I, I, I would think that that would be terrible. I think that would be, because uh, people would just do it, they would just do uh, uh, you know, energy cycle uh, over and over and over, <laughs> over and over and over and over. But no, if, Avatar. I mean, Avatar, Avatar is yeah, like Avatar. a three minute quicker. completion. Yeah, you know, and you don't have to remember left, right, up, down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I generally don't like the idea, but I do, but without restricting it to eight to 10 hour completions, um, is there anything that you would go back to, say, every six months or every year? Or is there anything that you would just love to replay every now and again? Like you could say Bioshock again, but is there anything else besides that uh, without those restrictions that you would that you would do? I mean, I kind of do that with Bioshock. I, st- I mean, I, I have every version of Bioshock 2. I've completed the multiplayer in every version of Bioshock 2. But I go back and I tend to play it a- about once a year, about once every six months until I'm done all of them. And I still have the three, the international 360 version and the Bioshock collection versions to go back and do. But I always enjoy it. I always enjoy going back. And then after I finish with Bioshock 2, I'll probably do the same thing with all the versions of Bioshock 1 because it's the same situation. I have all of them and I love to go back to it. And a couple other games that I, I find myself really enjoying or did until I ran out of achievements in them was... Um, Red Faction Guerrilla, which is a f- absolutely fantastic mm-hmm. game, so good. And every time I went back to, it, I mean, and I, I had to replay you know, it twice on the PC because I lost the missions. One of the missions never showed up. Yeah, I, I had that on the 360, and I didn't even care because it was so much fun. It was just such a great game, and it was so fun to play, and it's so fun to go back to. Um, and Syndicate is one I love to go back to about once a year. And particularly in the multiplayer, I usually I usually run a group through once every whenever I get the urge, which is about once a year. And um, uh, Rainbow Six Vegas 2 also mm. is an absolutely fantastic game that I really like to go back to. Uh, I think I think that's all that comes to mind. Yes, yeah, for yeah, me, they're, it's, they're... it's the MMOs, right? Like I, I, I still play probably more, more Neverwinter than I should. I mean the time I put into the achievements I have and I still don't have the end game armor and things like that, that I need to finish the game. Cause I'm just, it, it's more time and money than I could justify mm-hmm. for the game risk score. That's involved. Well, see, you, you just need to, you need to go on to the Hong Kong and the China version. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> well, before they added the DLC, that wouldn't be such a bad proposition, right? Cause it's, it's not that bad a game until you start getting into the, uh, is it crazy now? The, the end game stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the end game stuff that's in the game now that that's brutal. And, and, that stupid achievement they added to not die through a run anybody in the party. That's the one that I'm dreading the most. I, 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 oh. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of worried. <laughs> I, I haven't I, followed it in ages. I mean, I never played it, but it always, you know, because it was the first kind of China game that was like the big China game, it always caught my attention, but, you know, never enough to want to go out and spend $800 on a Chinese Xbox yeah. for one game. Uh, the, I mean, the price is coming down, and, and the list oh, of yeah, games no, is growing. It's, so it's, I, I foresee a Chinese Xbox in my future, but I, with the uh, with the One X coming out right now, uh, and that's something I do plan on getting. Um, I just can't justify getting that at the same time. Yeah, I mean, the last so I've helped a few people get the Chinese Xboxes. I think the last time I checked, they were about the same price as they are in the U.S. Because before, the, the actual console was more on top of you know paying commissions and shipping and all and that to get it to here. Do the activation for you and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and which apparently on the new ones you don't have to do. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's hit and miss because one of them did, one that I've heard of did, and one didn't. So it's 
It's not a guaranteed thing. That's could just sure. be when they were manufactured or something like that, right? Like whichever yeah, or whatever. it's something. Um, and and then of course shipping is like yeah. hundred ish, and then you pay the service that buys it and ships it to you is like five to eight percent of the whole total. So I mean, you know, you're probably looking in the five hundred range, which isn't crazy. I mean, people paid that for yeah, people paid that for Japan boxes yeah. way back. I mean. I got a fancy Japan box, so I think I probably paid close to that for mine with shipping, but I also shipped a whole bunch of games with it, and I, got, I just got a whole big bundle when I did mine, because I didn't want to pay for shipping 18 times. So Yeah, I got lazy and got a slim of each one of them, because I didn't want to have to deal with the power issues. With the power bricks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... <laughs> So. Yeah, both of my both of my um, import my European console and my Japan console are both E models, and I have a second um, original model PAL. But yeah, yeah, I I agree. It's it's nice to know that those boxes probably aren't going to break, especially the Japan one. The European ones are super cheap and easy to get in the U.S. now, mm-hmm. but the the Japanese ones are nice to know that they're not going to break. Anyway, All right, then. on that tangent. Yeah, yeah. So moving on. Um, just a little bit of a, a follow up from last week. Saucy Slingo asks you specifically, Randy. Well, he doesn't ask you. He asks everybody. How many bodies do we think are hiding in, in the hole in your basement? Ooh, there's got to be a few. I mean, can I'll you, have to, can you give I'll us a ballpark check. of how big it is so we know? Uh, I mean, we- you could comfortably fit. From what I remember, I didn't look too closely. Because you know the bodies, but I would guess you could comfortably fit three to four bodies in there. You might have to move them around a little bit, but you could probably get three or four in there. Ah, so it's like body Tetris. Yeah, <laughs> I mean maybe not quite, but I mean it depends. I mean, are, are the, you know it depends on how big these bodies are too. I suppose. Well, they'll get smaller over time, so it's yeah. not big down. Yeah. Then you can might be able to fit a fifth body in there. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Well, that was uh, our community feedback. And guys, we're we're getting to the end of the show here. Let's let's do our final section. Basically, do a little bit of recap of what we've been playing and our plans for the near future. I'm going to give it up to you first, Smirnov, since we all know you went to well, you went for the easy completion with Energy Cycle. But uh, other than that, what have you what have you been working on, and uh, do you plan on slowing down in the future, in the near future here, or what? Well, I, I'm slowed back down to normal. I guess would be what I, I would say uh, at this point. Um, it, it's really hard for me to list my games for this part because, like, during that that mad rush, I completed like 30 games, right? Ugh, um, highlights and highlights. Highlights, yeah. yeah. I, I went back and finished up Rocket League. I got the new DLC that done there. Finished up Farming Sim. Did the chess game today. Um, which brought back some boosting times because I had to do 32 tags in a tournament. Um, so that was kind of fun to do. And then, oh, I uh, meant to ask you about Farming Sim. How yeah. hard... I, I got it at a thrift store brand new a while ago. And, you know, mostly I just wanted it because it's kind of obscure and it was brand new. And it was a good price. Um, but how long does that... Is that really a 40 to 50 hour game or is it well, like idle time? It's or mostly idle it... time. Yeah, because you can hire somebody to do most of the work for you. You can rubber band a car to drive in a circle for you. And you're letting money tick up. So... Once you know, once you have your solar collectors and your wind farms going and stuff like that, the money achievements are just time. The uh, you know the fields and some of that stuff's just time. You have to do some hay baling and some tree cutting and some stuff like that, but it's nowhere near the the forty hour mark. But hmm. yes, the game will run for forty hours, but you won't be playing for forty. Yeah, hours. yeah, because that's that's kind of what it looked like. So because at first I looked at, it, I was like, oh, I'll probably never play that, but you know, maybe, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I did it both. We'll I did see. it on the one and the three sixty, right? So. Oh. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, I might I might have to actually play that then. Cuz I wouldn't I wouldn't mind actually playing one of those games. I mean, you know, I did the easy one with the glitch on the on the yeah, one yeah, that's yeah. like the 20 minute completion or whatever. Yeah. But um I yeah, haven't not, actually I played they patched one. that, didn't it? They did, but you can yeah. still do it on the disc. So what ended up happening was is I had access to that game digitally and I waited. <laughs> I didn't play it right away. And then on my I think it was my game binge month or I had it for random to-do list, one or the other. I had it on random to-do list, I think. And I was like, oh, yeah, easy. I'll just, you know, I got <laughs> I had two achievements thing. I'll just, I'll just do them. Or no, it was UHH. That's what it was, UHH. Um, so I load it up. I go to do the glitch. doesn't work. I'm like, oh, 
And then I look at the guides. It's been patched. Great. So fortunately, so you know, at this point, I'm thinking, oh, great. Is, am I going to have to play this like 50 hour long game that I don't want to play? Now that, of course, it's on my tag because I popped the tutorial achievement. <laughs> uh, but no, the, the, you can get the disc version and play it offline. And then so what you do is you play offline, you do the glitch, get all the money, and then just go back online and buy all the stuff and pop all the achievements in 10 minutes or whatever. So, yeah, I, I think I, I jumped on it just because there was rumblings that it was going to go away. At, yeah. At the time. So. Yeah, because like when it came out, it was like, geez, I think it was like thirty or forty dollars. I mean, it was it was not cheap. Yeah. Um, but the disc, I think we got it. I split it with someone. I think we paid twenty five or something. So split twenty five is like twelve fifty. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. And I I got to keep the disc at the end too, which made it even better. Nice. So, a little bonus. So what else? What sorry, that was it. No, sorry, that was about it for me. I, I right, mean, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, yeah. <laughs> no, that 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 totally works. What about you, Randy? Well, I've mostly been moving and like doing big rigs and podcast stuff this week, but I did get a little bit of gaming in. Uh, I played some Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Well, I tried to. So there were some internet problems in the new house. The lines to the house were bad or something along. The, I, I think only one line was replaced, but there was something at the pole. Um, and my internet would periodically cut out, especially when I connected multiple tabs or devices to the same site, which Xbox Live, you know, is not necessarily a website, but it's the same place that they're all pointing to. So, so when I'm boosting Assassin's Creed, we're both running three boxes. Well, as soon as I turned two to three boxes on, they killed off my whole internet every time. So we got about two matches in and then we gave up. Um, so that was a real pain. It's, it's been a pain until they came and fixed it. And, and it was just, you know, it would periodically die every hour or so. And I'd have to go reset the modem and do everything. So that's fixed now, fortunately, but it was very annoying. Um, so since I could only connect one thing at a time, I we moved on to Virtual Fighter Five Final Showdown, which is a very easy XBLA completion that requires to play ten ranked matches, which is very quick. Uh, I played quite a bit of Killer Instinct, mostly because I didn't have my Xbox set up for a lot of the week, and I had a few, you know, a couple hours here and there um, on my computer that's new my new fancy beefy laptop that can play killer instinct so i played quite a bit of shadow lords just you know i hadn't really gotten a chance to dig into it and it's quite fun except for gargos man what a cheater they designed that microtransaction mode to cheat just like candy crush is ridiculous it is absolutely ridiculous stupid stupid can you get a facebook like to keep playing (laughs) <laughs> unfortunately not no you got to replay the whole thing you got to replay it's not quite that bad but you know you can spend some uh some ki gold and buy some more power-ups or something so that gargos can still beat you anyway this is the thing we got to the end all my guys you know decked out full health no deaths you know my top fighters you know big damage output guys got got them to half health three guys ridiculous ridiculous <laughs> but i found out afterwards that um there is a combo with rash that the computer cannot comprehend so to beat the cheater you just use rash and you just keep spamming that combo in the corner and the computer can't figure out how to how to counter it or just do anything so it just stands there unless you kill him so watch out gargos come back oh nice i i beat your cheater game uh, so yeah, I, I was actually really disappointed with that because uh, other than the bot, the final boss fight, Shadow Lords is super fun. It's, I think even with the microtransactions, it's done pretty fair and it's the kind of, it gave it a, a good kind of like replayable adventure type mode with the, the kind of, you know, light branching decision making and, and the, the loot and gear and stuff. And, and that's, that's kind of fun. Except for the, the, I just can't get over how stupid the final boss fight is. Oh, and by the way, I was playing on easy. That's not even on the the harder two difficulties. So it, I'm I a firm believer imagine. that easy means nothing in fighting games. 
<laughs> no, Killer yeah, Instinct. I don't killer Instinct. There is a very big difference between easy and hard. I know. However, in Mortal Kombat Two in the Mortal Kombat collection, no, there is no difference. Like you can play on very hard, you can play on easy. It's still it cheats. I think it's just always on very hard. I don't know. Yeah, they just put it there as a joke. It doesn't actually yeah, do anything. I think so. Because, <laughs> yeah, man, that game would be like a two-hour completion if it wasn't for how ridiculously hard Mortal Kombat 2 is in that collection. Um, then got the got the crew together with Gatorade, Prue, and Fug, and myself, and we played oh, some yeah. GTA 5 heists. Our, you know, we were a little rusty. We were a little rusty at first, but we got back in the swing of things. We were heisting it up, and we were having a good time. The pink car is back. <laughs> I don't think I try. I mean, the, the pink car was back, but the real shortcut was taken in the the EMP truck. Yeah, I mean heist that is was fun. Heist is that a was time. a that was a good that was yeah. a good. I feel like we should stream heists because we we, we the things that happen when we're heisting, man. <laughs> like the pink car driving is. Are you guys great. doing it twice? Like do the Japanese version too? <sighs> um sort of so that's the reason we're replaying it so okay, we it. <laughs> our crew did it all on 360 okay. then you know we plan some of us plan to import to both versions uh some of us just import it to one so you only, yeah you only get one full import yeah we found that out the hard way and you should have read one my of, notes <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that and and one of us imported to the international version first and the other imported to the japanese version first so so that was the mistake now we need to find two more japan version players but we'll we'll see so i imported to the japanese version first so we're playing the international version now to clean up the rest of my heist stuff but man heist i don't even mind heists are a blast there that, that was a really great title update you know, even though it's kind of simple, I mean, a lot of the stuff is already there. It's it is a really it is a really fun and well put together game mode. It's sure. not surprising that the best part of the actual campaign is the best part of the of the multiplayer stuff as well. So I've still yet to play the the main campaign, but I'll get yeah. to that one day. Yeah. And then the last couple of days, you know, I hadn't I had barely played anything. Most of my gaming was actually last weekend after. Uh, kind of immediately after the recording. Uh, so mostly throughout the week, I played nothing in between, you know, working on unpacking. I, I stayed at work a little bit late a couple of days this week and just had other other things to do. So I, the last couple of days, you know, today, today and yesterday, I just kind of wanted to veg out, do something mindless, you know, and watch some videos at the same time. So I played some some Gat out of fun. And oh, boy, <laughs> on the 360, and boy, is it as terrible as I remember it. Uh, but it's almost done now, so I'll probably f- I might even finish that up tonight. We'll see. Probably not tonight. It's going to take a little bit longer than that. Well, you're pretty fortunate. It didn't glitch on you. It didn't. I confirmed because I got all the collectibles. <laughs> oh God, I hate that game so much. Uh, yeah, so it's it's bad, of course. But and I was really happy. I got the. Um, hit five cars in one jump first try. Oh, that's I didn't that's e- a tricky one. I didn't even have to restart once. Yeah, that's nice. The game froze on me immediately after it popped, but it didn't matter because it it's not a challenge or anything. It's just an achievement, so it still counted. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, got out of fun. That's probably gonna be my next completion. But it is. <laughs> They should. That game should not exist. It's so bad. It is it so bad. It should exist as DLC. Yeah, that's, all. that's fair. That, that would have been fine DLC. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It would have been I terrible DLC, but it would have been uh, adequate at least. It would have been adequate for Saints Row Four quality. We'll it would have been way. a bad piece of DLC. That's all. It just would have been a mediocre. Yeah. Bad. Actually, it probably would it would have been better than like most map packs for value. Sure. Uh, yeah. Than mo- yeah, yeah. You have to play as Kenzie. That's new. Did you play right? so, yeah, and Gat. I mean, you haven't been able to play as Gat before either. I don't you, think you could fly. It's fine as a piece of DLC. But yeah, anyways. you're right. If it was a ten dollar DLC, it would get like two and a half stars. I'll, I'll, we really shouldn't <laughs> well we should we should because it's terrible anyways um so that's it for you huh um let, uh, yeah, let me that's talk it for about me. what i have been playing then real quick before we close out here uh it's not a ton um as i mentioned before i finished odst last week 
Um, and then myself and Fufu Cuddly Poof moved into Halo 4 stuff. And we got all of the Spartan Ops done. So um, right now, the community Halo stuff will be focused on Halo 3, but we're setting ourselves up to be ready, get all the campaign stuff out of the way for Halo 4 so that when the time comes, we can just work on uh, boosting the multiplayer stuff. So that's exciting. Now Click remember, rate. Microsoft hates him. Complete Halo 4 campaign on Legendary with this one cool trick. <laughs> I don't think it's been mentioned on the podcast before, but if you've completed the campaign once on any difficulty, yep. it might have to be in co-op. I'm not sure. Uh, you can just load the last checkpoint on Legendary and which, complete the rest of the mission. Which I will, l- Let me tell you, that saves you like tons of time. I'm like, sure. I am sure. Like I'm 80, sure. 90% of the time spent. So. And I will be I will be able to confirm that because I will be doing that achievement fairly shortly. It's one of the very few vanilla Halo 4 achievements I have left. Um, I actually also have to do that achievement in Halo Reach, but uh, I want to get the crappy Halo out of the way before I, uh, I get into the good Halo. So no, that one in Reach was actually pretty fun. Yeah, no, I'm I mean, I'm, it, I'm very much looking forward to going back to Reach. I'm, yeah, I can't it, wait. It was tough. Like, it was still challenging. I, but I felt like the one in Halo 4 was really, really unfair. Like, the, the checkpoints were were questionable. The, and just the, the lack of any good weapons almost Ugh. all, all of the time. Like, the weapons in Halo 4, like, you couldn't get through a level just because there's nothing you can use to kill anything around you. It's, it's not just... It's a combination of the weapons and the enemies. Because yeah. the... the uh, equivalent of the brute or the um, elite is much cont- is it so much more of a bullet sponge in Halo Four. Uh, what, I can't remember what they're called, but they're the guys that float around and they and they teleport too, which is the most obnoxious thing that they do. So you'll 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 whittle them down and whittle them down. So me and me and Fufu were were working on these Spartan Ops missions, and we were playing. We had to play through w- only one, thankfully. Uh, one whole episode on legendary and i mean entire battle rifle clips entire battle like multiple battle rifle clips before their shields fell and it's like it's like this is stupid this is so dumb why am i just shooting at this thing over and over again then he'll just teleport away and he'll be fine and it's it's very unbalanced yeah the halo 4 campaign was very bad reach however was super balanced and it was fun too because there were certain sections that and I really enjoyed doing this that you could bypass if you, you know, kind of did a little stealthy or a little platforming, or a little bit of running here and there. That was, it was about as hard as actually fighting everything, but it was just kind of satisfying to be able to skip it just yeah. in that way. It was, it, it mixed up the gameplay a little bit, even though, you know, maybe you're kind of, it wasn't intentional, but it was a fun way to get through the campaign in addition to the normal combat and all that. Yeah, so I'll definitely be going back and and doing that soon. Hopefully, hopefully exploiting that that save because I beat Halo Four on Legendary in co op. So hopefully, I can just kind of do the last checkpoint and that'll be fine. Been working on Clicker Heroes every day as as often as possible. Still love that game. Still having a great time. Ascended for the second time just this evening. So uh, start to see those numbers go up very quickly. Oh man, this game is so much fun. I don't know why people hate it. Some people hate on it. I can understand. But working on that quite a bit. Clicker, clicker game. Yeah, clicker I'll game. Yeah. on it. <laughs> game. That's what I call it. Then, of course. Money, money clicker. Oh, yeah. How the much same money s- did you put in your clicker? S- same, no money. How no much? Money. No Just money. Just wait. No, we'll check in next week. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Rocket League, of course, came up with their season, or I don't know if they called it season two, but it was their two year anniversary update. Uh, so awesome. More achievements. Got a bunch of those and, and just played a bunch of Rocket League. Any excuse to go back to Rocket League is okay with me. Um, other than that, I got... Okay, so uh, we got the new random to-do lists, I think, just after the show last week. And the second one on my list in ratio, the second one, presumably a really easy achievement, was a Lego Batman 2 achievement. And here I am. Okay, okay. I'll just work on that one because the first one was a Resident Evil achievement, and I haven't played that much of it, so I don't really know. I can't gauge how easy that one is. So I'm like, okay, I'll just do this Lego Batman one real quick, right? Well, anybody that's played any of the Lego games knows 
that Lego games are essentially split into two parts. You beat the game once, and then you do cleanup, where you go back and play every level again, and you get all the red bricks and all the blah, 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 blah. Well, it turns out this was actually um, a later stage Lego achievement. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to go back and clean all this stuff up anyway, I might as well just get the whole game done. So I've been working all week at finishing this stupid game. I'm like, hopefully an hour away from, from completing this. I'm, I'm hoping to do this, finishing this tonight if I can, uh, if nobody bothers me to play Rocket League. Uh, and then I'll finally be done with that. And then for me, I'm just going to work on the rest of my random to-do stuff for, for, for the following few weeks. So you're doing random to-do lists like I do random to-do lists is what you're saying. I, I don't. I usually don't just like say, okay, I'll work on this one achievement and then just complete the whole game. But it just so happened that Lego is one of those games where, yeah, it just makes sense. At this point, if I'm going to put the time in to get all the studs to collect all of these characters that I need, I might as well just finish it out at this point. So I won't be doing that with the rest of my games. I promise you. I have a... A Minecraft achievement. I guarantee you I will not be finishing Minecraft this week. Uh, but, hey, uh, I mean, maybe we got some mad connections on Xbox 360 that's like, hey, you want to do a Minecraft world? Come join. <laughs> that would be really cool, somebody. This yeah, is I'm, definitely not a suggestion. <laughs> it would be really nice, but this is actually a, a pocket version, Android pocket version. So, Oh, well, you could complete that that's this easy. week. Yeah, you yes, just download yes. a world. <laughs> which which I have, and then I screwed the world up, so now I have to re-download it. But uh, uh, so apparently, you got to be careful which doors you open in those achievement worlds, because they'll just let things free, and they'll just kind of roam around <laughs> and kill you. And uh, anyways, it's that's another here, another. Uh, but that's what I've been working on. That's what pretty much I'll, I'll be continuing to work on. That is also pretty much what we needed to talk about, but... Uh, review set is coming up. Uh, Randy, what are we reviewing this week? I believe it is Walking Dead Season 3. Ooh, I'm about to start that, too. I haven't started that one. So we'll find out how it is. Z to Z Podcast presents Review Z. All right. So this week on Review Z, I'm joined again with my regular co host, my twin, Planting. Howdy, howdy. 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 So, uh,. In lieu of actually doing a review this week, let's just talk about G Task. I'm kidding. <laughs> we should do that just every week, just spoil with people. We're gonna give you some insight into G Task 2018. No, um, no. So this week, though, I am sure this game will be used in G Task. <laughs> oh, there's point. a very good chance. It's easy. It's fast. It is The Walking Dead: A New Frontier, or season three. Well. Actually, wait, was Michonne season three? Well, I, I don't I guess know if Michonne really counts as season three because it doesn't have any of the regular characters. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is three. Yeah. Or, yeah, kind of like a Star Wars-esque. It fast forwards a few years like, wow, there's another gap. You could have a gap back one. You could have a Rogue One type walking dead to figure out what happened to Clementine. And then she got bitter. Um, so, Okay. <laughs> Full disclosure, if you do not want spoilers, we will try to avoid them, but to talk about this episode, there's going to be some material that we'll possibly cover. So, this is at the end of the show, and Randy probably made an announcement before, but if you do not want any any spoilers whatsoever of The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, don't listen to this. Honestly, you wouldn't even care about our review because you were going to probably play this anyway, even if we told you not to. So <laughs> it's out there. We said it, right? Said our piece? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So this is Walking Dead New Frontier um, from our standard publisher developer, Telltale Games. This actually started to come out in December of 2016 and uh, got finished up not too long ago has an Xbox Live price for the complete season of twenty four ninety nine. Currently if you buy this while we are talking about it is on sale for fourteen ninety nine. And uh yeah, with that, so how long in the future from season two is this? Gotta be at least ten years. Oh, I don't think it's ten years. How old do you think Clem was in the first one? Uh or sorry in the second one. 
maybe like I don't know. I'm thinking like maybe nine or ten, maybe in the second one. And yeah. she's she's pubescent in this game. So yeah. Oh yeah. She just had her exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe four or five years. Okay. So four or five years of the now your main. But however, this is not about Clem. This is about Javier and his family. Air quote family. Extended family. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's the walking dead. If you've played walking dead before, you now have, you, you, you start with Javier and his extended family and you're trying to survive. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like every walking dead. I mean, it's the biggest difference is that you're not playing Clem. I mean, you, we're, we've been kind of accustomed to that. So, yeah, when you start, like, wait a minute, who are these guys? Who is this family? I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's start absorbing a whole new group. Yeah. I, I will say sometimes, and this is, like, what I felt with Michonne, because it, I don't seem to get as attached to people when it's just, bam, here's your new group. Okay, it's a walking dead. I People are going to die. I might just start hating everybody just so I don't feel any pain when somebody passes. Is that I, just I'm me? Sort of, no, I'm sort of with you there. And I actually want to say I got more jaded like that thanks to playing Game of Thrones, which for some reason this episode really felt like – or sorry, this uh, this season really felt like. it's it, Normally in The Walking Dead, you feel like there's a, a, a decent option or a good option you can kind of go. This one almost felt like everything was wrong and everyone was going to die, which was like Game of Thrones instead, so – yeah, some of the choices were definitely I don't like either of these or this per- can I just shoot them? <laughs> also the dialogue options in in some instances didn't actually kind of line up with what the characters said, so I had to kind of go back and choose differently cuz the way they said it, what they said didn't even come close to what the little blurb you have is. I'm like, wow, that was brutal. Okay, reload. <laughs> Yeah. So some of the things. So now, if you've ever asked Randy what he thinks of Telltale Games, he says an absolute glitchy mess. I wouldn't say an absolute glitchy mess. It the achievements popped as they're supposed to. I, I mean, gone are the days though of like any of your choices having a semblance of a drive on the achievement. Literally. If you're just playing this game for achievements, you'll probably just get through one playthrough, and I don't know if you're going to even be that vested that you want to go through and try to get a second ending. I'm I'm still tentative if I want to do this again on Windows 10. I would probably play it again just because of of the sake of trying to get different people alive come the end of the story. Just like like every other game of sorry, every other Walking Dead game, you've got different paths you can take and and depending on on the path you take typically depends on on which characters make or or make it through or die and i don't know i kind of want to give it another shot see if i can end up with a different crew come the end yeah so part of the new frontier that you will find out in this game is the new frontier is almost a name of a group so a lot of this game, it seems outside, so you have two groups. You have your core group that you start with, Javier and his family, and then you have these new frontier people. And at the end, obviously, it's lots of people die. But I really felt like this second team of people, I don't know where I was supposed to get vested. I, I, and again, not to say the names or any of the but for the group, ones that you mean the town? Yeah, or the people in the New Frontier, whatever you want. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, when it was looking through, when you started giving your, okay, here's what happened to Javier and to the other people in that Javier party, some of it you're going, okay, yeah, maybe that one could have turned out. It turns out, like, as you said, you had one die that I didn't. So I'm like, okay, that obviously could be impacted. And I think we weighed out that the other... One of them's inevitable, and then – actually, I think all of them are inevitable. I think the only one person – unless, of course, the people that we had lived could have died. But in the New Frontier, 
that group of people in the town, the ones that lived and died, I really honestly couldn't care less if I got some of them saved. It would have been like, meh. I don't know. I mean, I guess it comes down to me thinking about how useful they are. I was kind of miffed at when I was losing the people that were really useful to me. Is, is that cold? Probably. But I was making like tactical decisions. Like, this person's worth more to me because of their skills. Yeah, though I think some of the – again, I think if anybody is actually really useful in The Walking Dead, it is inevitable you're going to lose. That is just how functionality goes, right? Oh, you're good? You're going to die. Are you an absolute useless, like, train wreck? Yeah. Oh, you're staying the entire game. Yeah, and you're driving a lot of the dialogue. True. And you're through. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'll hand you that. You're right. The the people that tend to sidetrack you more than you really want, they're the ones that stick around just to turn that screw on you. Yeah, so as the Walking Dead's go, I like this more than Michonne. At least it went a little bit longer, but it just becomes more of a quick time event, minor control tapping to advance a dialogue game i mean again i i still think the first two were better in my opinion of at least getting me emotionally invested into what was happening agreed i i I would probably say season one got me the most interested in the characters season two the second most and then yeah this is definitely down on the scale I, i think the biggest part is because telltale wrote clementine's script instead of us playing her it just felt weird it I mean, so I'm like kind of approaching the game itself as, wait a minute, this doesn't feel like Clem. But then again, it's because we're not her. We're getting their take on Clementine. Uh, I don't know. It it, it was fun. It was worth playing. It's definitely easy gamer score. You're talking about an hour per episode. So five hours, give or take for the whole game. But story wise, there's there's better telltale stories. Yeah, no, and and I think that's just one of the unfortunate. I think that's where you start running into the problems, though, with any of these. Once you start getting, you know, like I'm thinking, Minecraft season two is going to be upon us soon enough, and it's just inevitably. I think some of that what happens is after a while you go, not that you run out of runway in terms of story, but at certain points you've kind of scripted things a certain way to go and you have certain expectations. So it's always hard to kind of recapture what you could have. I mean, again, like with the first one, you go in not with any expectation. So you come in with a lot of expectation now and it just, I think it just lives a lot more potential to disappoint and, Again, does this mean, though, that, hey, if people buy this and it's successful, are we going to see Walking Dead Season 4, a New Frontier or product? <laughs> well, if you if we get to the end of the game, it's it's definitely set the stage for a, for an episode for, sorry, for a Season 4. Um, I mean, it, it's all said, it, 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 it all but says to be continued in the, in the end there. So, yeah, eh, there'll be more. Yeah, there will be more. As long as people are willing to pay the money, Telltale will gladly give it. Not like their engine takes a lot of time to <laughs> throw some oh, scale. God. Just go- and like like you saw of that video I, I, I sent you, the uh, at, at least it's not game-breaking, but I had this graphical glitch through two whole episodes where Javier's shirt like stretched off into infinity and quite commonly <laughs> threw the other people in the game. It was hilarious, but a little I odd. Did, I didn't have any glitching like that, but I did have one situation where he was walking towards the armored car and the door was shut and then he keeps walking and then the door suddenly open and then he continues walking and the door is shut again and you're going, well, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. So, I mean, there was some continuity issues. I didn't have any weird screen glitches like that. And I'm trying to think if I had it crash at all. I I mean, I I wasn't. Yeah, I I wasn't, as I said, seeing it was a total glitch fest. But some of the I don't know, some of the quick time events, you don't hit the button correctly. And you're like, I should have had that up arrow. 
and then you yep. got to play through. So you, yeah. Thankfully, they're usually pretty good with the checkpointing on those events, so you don't have to replay much. Yeah. So, again, wasn't bad. I, I don't regret having played through it, but again, I'm for doing the stack, I'm still, you know, I'm on a, eh, I'm not really sure if I really care too much to go see what happens to other people. I'll probably have another Telltale game to play instead. Got to do that Guardians of the Galaxy. I am Groot. So I've n- still never seen the movies. Really? So disappoint a lot. Disappoint a lot of the listeners. Now you haven't should probably watch the movie before you play the game. People would have said I should have done that about The Walking Dead. I should have probably watched the TV <laughs> show before. I'm you know, I'll play the Game of Thrones game. I still have never seen a Game of Thrones episode. Fair never. enough. H- have you played Borderlands at least? Yes, I've started playing through Borderlands. <laughs> there you go. It. But I've at least played it. At least I kind of get the storyline. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not horrible. I'm not completely out of like touch with what's going on in pop culture. But yeah, some of the stuff I'm like I actually didn't watch that. <laughs> oh, okay. it's it. Thankfully, they're not really important. You don't need to know the background to enjoy the stories, but it probably helps in in some of them, or at least some of the um, the like Easter eggs, so to say. They'll make a little more mm-hmm. sense if you've if you've familiarized yourself with that storyline. Okay, well, that's good to know. All right, so I, again, I guess in, in total, hopefully we didn't spoil too much for anybody. I think we kind of left it broad, but again, if you were going to play this because you play all the Walking Dead, doesn't really make a difference what we say. But if you're sitting there going, hey, 25 bucks, guys, should I really go out and play this? Eh, it is easy gamer score, but again, compared to the other ones, Honestly, I'm kind of more excited to play through Walking Dead Season 1 again on Windows 10. <laughs> no, I have to agree with you. I'd say this is kind of like a provisional. If 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 you can find it on sale or if you're really big into just cranking through the point and clicks, go for it. Otherwise, there's better things to spend that kind of cash on for the, the time you would invest in this. Yep. All right. Well, so until next week. Oh, yeah, guys, I'm off the next two weeks, so I don't know who you're uh, – Partner in crime's going to be next week, Warren, but go easy on him. Oh, it's going to be Prue. We're having fun. All right. Well, you guys have fun. And uh, until I get back off AK, everybody have a good one. Until next week. All right. That's it for us. Smirnov, if anybody, you know, anybody wanted to chat with you or say congratulations for being number one in the world, that's amazing. Is there any way that they could get a hold of you or, or contact you? Yeah. Um, Twitter, same as my gamer tag. Uh, Xbox Live is fine, or just a message on True Achievements. That's awesome. Randy, what about you? Uh, the usual, Crandy on True Achievements. That's my name with the C in front of it. Or Randy2727 on Twitter. Those are probably the two places that I'll see it the most. Yeah, same same thing for me. Uh, find me on Xbox or on Twitter. At Twitter, I'm at 1updan. That's the number one, not the word. All right, Freem, that's everything we have for the show. Take us out. All right, guys, I think it's about time we wrap up the show here. Before we do, I want to touch on a quick piece of zombie news. Um, they got this from GameInformer.com, but they have uh, have have broken that the there's a, going to be a new Walking Dead game. I know, right? You never see anything from that franchise. Um, this particular one is coming up from Skybound Entertainment and Skydance Interactive. They are partnering together to make a a brand new game based on the uh, the Walking Dead series. Which hey, guess what is going to have zombies in it? Um, the it's it's at the beginning, right? So there's there's not a lot of details here. But what they are going to do, what they've been their their kind of their mission statement here is um, they're 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 going to create a like normal Walking Dead a a story that you know really focuses on the characters, things like that, as well as having you know zombies to kill, of course. But it's a it's it's a an adventure game that's being developed for VR. So it's a VR uh, focused title that they're working on here, and it is it's being designed as a full game experience. That is a piece from the, the the article specifically, which I think is important because pretty much everything that's been you know out so far has all been like tech demo-y stuff. 
Real short, right? I if if you told me of a, a Walking Dead game, I would imagine it'd be a tower defense shooter, uh, or you know, like a, a turret shooter. I think is probably a more appropriate term. Uh, not the case here. So I'm curious what uh, you know what they intend to to make, um, and and really when it's going to even come out. Like I said, not a lot of details here. Uh, so we'll just have to kind of stay focused and uh, see what what's going on. But you know, Walking Dead guys. It's not like there's a billion of Walking Dead things out there. Okay, fine, there is, but I like Walking Dead anyway. It's okay. So I think that's going to do it for the show. Um, we're so glad that you guys listened. We really appreciate it. Hopefully, you enjoyed the show. Hopefully, uh, you know we didn't. Uh, we apologize for those audio issues on the the review segment last week. Um, I don't know what happened to planting. Uh, you know. Planting's recording that got real wonky. So sorry about that. Uh, we'll do better next time. Uh, as far as like Randy editing, no, I thought it was pretty good. So I was happy with it. So, you know, hey, I, maybe maybe this show can still survive. Um, but it, it would really help to survive if you could um, reach, you know, go to our Patreon and, and, you know, anything you can do to support. And that would be amazing if you could help out at all. Secondarily, just letting people know about the show. That would be fantastic. Spread the word about uh, about what we do here, um, you know, and and let people know how much fun we have in our in our contests and our community and, and all that good stuff. So that's uh, that's about it. If you want to reach out to us, we got plenty of plenty of ways you can do it. Uh, best is probably Twitter at z z z e d t o z e d or email uh, contact at z z dot com. Of course, you can always go to our forums forum dot z z dot com, or you can join my personal Discord channel where uh, most of the z z community is discord dot m e slash freemhole, and that's f r e a m w h o l e. Uh, that's that's me, of course. So that's a wonderful place to to meet up with people who listen to the show. Uh, so with that, I guess, uh, you know, thank you to Smirnov and Peru, Damien, Planting, Peru. Did I say Peru? Anyway, uh, I've been Brandon. And to all you Achievement Hunters and Gamerscore Junkies out there, thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you next episode. Hey guys, want to get a quick touch in with the community roundup, our contest re- recap for the week. Um, all, as always, I'm going to start with the GTASC. We are now at period 26 is over and done with. And uh, we had nobody eliminated and across the board. Everybody survived both on the individual and on the team side of it. There are 45 teams left in the competition. They're eliminating four per week right now. So you uh, are, are, are near miss, the closest to the bottom. Well, it was uh, it was by 10 spots, 653 gamer score, or yeah, points, um, I guess because it's on TA. Points is the Achievement Hounds podcast, which isn't up you know, a, a recording podcast right now, but you can go listen to old stuff. Uh, but remember, NBA Kirkland is on that one. Uh, and so his team survives. They're the, the closest to uh, elimination of the listeners and contributors to the show. Our Smooth Sailing Award once again goes to the Punching Kangaroos. They got ninth place. It's the team of ZZ Urban Space, Manchin, Dr. Sea Monkey, Grug, and Montana 97. Nice job, guys. Continuing uh, the quote-unquote casual gameplay that's lasted you this long as far as the individual goes we are down to 116 individual uh contestants our uh near misses uh listener to the show uh oriole 2682 last survivor by a smear two ta yeah, I know. Two points kept him alive. That was impressive. As far as uh, regular contributor or, you know, names you hear all the time, uh, Saucy Slingo and ZZ Urban Spaceman, both near the bottom as well. But they successfully used bonuses to stay alive this week. So nice work on that. Uh, bit of strategery. And then uh, our Smooth Sailing Award. Well, can't get any smoother than this. Chin Doctor, first place with 12,500 points-ish uh, for the week. 
fantastic job. I have to assume that's a ridiculous amount of bean diving, uh, but I guess I didn't even look at what the uh, what the achievements were. So, man, that is just nuts. Way to go, Chin Doctor, on that one. Um, of course, I mentioned during my recap that the random to-do lists are up. So if you don't have a random to-do list, you absolutely should go grab one. Uh, just go to our forums, forum.zdz.com, and ask. All you do is say, I want one, and we'll give you a list. Uh, it's never too late to enter, even though the, the year-long contest is over. We do a monthly draw. All you need is one achievement, and you have a shot at getting uh, a, you know, a prize. So there's no reason not to. It just it encourages you to play video games. It's wonderful. So, uh, yeah, jump in the random to-do list. I love it. It's my favorite. Um, so those are up and ready to go. Then we have uh, the community contest for the month. It is the anti-bean dive that we're hosting at ZZZ right now. And, and that is for, it's the absolute antithesis of the bean dive that is just wrapping up as far as registration times go. Hopefully you all put a ton of new games on your tag. Uh, you know, we'll see if you can recover from the damage. One wonderful way to start recovering is by completing those games that you just added. So if you started them and completed them in this month, you will earn bonus entries into the contest. But simply completing any game, you know, if for some reason I decided I wanted to go back to Zuma's Revenge and get that Iron Frog achievement, the last one I need, or the last one I need in Limbo, of course, for not dying five times, those would get me entries into the uh, into the prize pool. But... Of course, those are remarkably difficult, and that's why they're the only achievement I have left. But if you have any of those, go nuts. Unlock them, close out those games, and uh, and you will get entries into the July contest. The other July contests we have, uh, the Gamer Tags, we have two this month. Angel SK and McLovin Legend. Uh, 21 different different uh, letters to go for. Some crossovers, not so bad, uh, you know, of between the 7 and the 14. Um... All you have to do is play a game that starts with that letter. So for, uh, you know, I've done a few already, like M, I did Microsoft Solitaire Collection, or L, I did Lego uh, Marvel Super Heroes, and Letter Quest, because Mick Love and Legend has two L's, so I need two different games with an L in it. Uh, there is a number in Mick Love and Legend. It's Mick Love and Legend 1, and so numbers are, are simply unlocking a uh, an achievement in any game that has any number in it so nba 2k 16 right so has the numbers there at the end counts for your number it also could count for the n if you're interested uh and and get you know maybe a far cry 3 or something that could be your number as well so uh if you unlock uh all you have to do is, is post in the forums to say i did it and and Terrigan's scanner will uh, will run and tell you if you qualify. We have two different tags, so you can get up to twenty entries this month for doing both tags. Uh, you know, hopefully you have a backlog big enough to uh, to to tick all these off. Sometimes those V's and uh, I think that's probably the most difficult one. The I's and O's those are always tricky. Finally, the Omokas for July. Name that game is another. Um, Unlocking achievements that fulfill letters that will uh, take out the the name of the game that you are playing. So if you look at the forums, um, specifically the the uh, I think the the most the, the the prominent one that that was used by uh, M. Surin in his example was Destiny, um, because that game happens to have of the seven letters. Um, the D E S T I N Y. There's an achievement that starts with all of those, so you can get an achievement that starts with D, one that starts with E, one that starts with S, and by unlocking those, you get because that's seven letters, you get the square of that, which is 49 entries. Holy crap! I know. Uh, games that don't have enough, you can you can just simply unlock um, an achievement that you know has a, has chipping away at those letters. So like for instance. Um, you know, Diablo, if you unlock one that has a D, then you get one entry. That's worth the price of admission, so you might as well do it. Um, other than that, I think that's about it for the active contests right now. I mentioned before at TrueAchievements.com, we are going to be, um, 
getting ready to launch a brand new contest uh, toward the end of the month of July here. So if you're listening to this and haven't seen anything, uh, you know, maybe go take a take a mosey on over. We'll do our best to you know obviously promote over at that site as well. But uh, you know if you like contests and you enjoy scoring uh, you know points toward them, well keep your eyes out for that as well. So that'll do it for this month uh, or this with this weekly recap on our contests. I hope you enjoy it. Hope you like participating because these are so much fun to do and and uh, and have. And so if uh, yeah if you're out there and and you know haven't jumped in yet, and then next week I promise next week I'm going to do winners for. Uh, June. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, guys, get gaming, get earning, have some fun. We'll talk to you next week. See ya!